need I need that sports sports encyclopedia. Where you at, Steve Kim? Got trend in the cut. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? In the gym shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that, that are like-minded and, and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. How is it you You are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his flowers. What is, what is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. I am him. You's not it. What's the topic? With your logic when I flow. Big Komodo, I was talking. got to get back. To letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the AS a rap. We won the games been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of you know the show, bro. The gas, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? It is Merciless Monday on the great Coach JB show with Big Smitty. And I'm taking no mercy today. I don't care if Smitty can't speak, yell, cuss. I don't care. If he on restriction, it don't matter. He got the headphones on. He going to get after it. He going to give you his opinion. I'm going to give you mine because it's the realest show on planet Earth. And it is Merciless Monday. We're taking no mercy. We got Big Matt McChesney. We might fight live on air. Virtual fight. Big Jeff Nadu jumps on. We're going to talk about tonight's national championship game. It is Merciless Monday up in here. Pound that like button. Become a member today. Subscribe and become a member of our Discord Slap Nation. Plus, our winnable slash slap picks are hitting. I went two for two in my lock picks yesterday in the UFL. Cappers from every sport play with us, and you can be the next big winner. Subscribe to our first down plan, and you can play weekly or monthly with the pros. Winnable.com slash slap picks today. We got a super loaded show all week long. We got Steve Kim all week. We got Tank Johnson back this week, maybe two different times. We got Big Matt McChesney three times. Uh, We're going to have some special guests on this week, plus Sean King every Thursday. We're going to do bet picks with him as well. We're going to break down some UFL QBs. We're going to break down the NFL mock draft, and we're going to talk some NFL football in general. Plus, spring football in the NCAA college football landscape has dropped. It's going live everywhere. Spring football is all over. We got some film. We'll show some of that as well. So uh, today we got a super loaded lineup. Like I said, UConn Purdue uh, tonight. Plus, our NBA and Major League Baseball picks and our mock draft. We'll be, we'll be making our mock NFL draft live, and we will be betting them on who goes first, who goes second, etc. on betonline.ag, which you can bet the NFL draft picks. So we'll be doing that as well. Well, let's start off the show. Friday, I found out some guy has basically dedicated his YouTube channel to me. I don't even know his name right now. I think it's Big Snacks or Snacks, Big Snacks or Snack Bigs or something like that. I thought it was illegal to take clips from another YouTube channel and use them on yours without permission. Apparently not when it comes to Coach Deion Sanders. Y'all call him Coach Prime. This guy apparently is upset at me and he's upset at Matt for speaking the truth. And if you are mad at Matt, when you clearly, you clearly must not watch this show because Matt defends Prime and Dion in Colorado more than any human on planet Earth. So he must not watch Big Matt. So that tells me one or two things. He's either just a straight, blinded, ignorant fool, or he wants to play the race card like Ryan Clark and everybody else, Stephen A. Smith and everyone else. That's clearly what he stands for. Because I read the comments, and he clearly loves Big Smitty. Smitty got some fans, y'all. He loved Big Smitty. He defend Big Smitty to a T. Big Smitty brother, though. He got the... I'm a white boy, though. So we're going to dive into it. I can't wait. This guy is upset at me. Uh, he lo- he hate me and Matt. Uh, Matt and I. 
But listen, he's a what we call a BMK. Let's just call it what it is. Another man who talks about another man without ever confronting him or hitting him up on a man-to-man basis to discuss is a bitch. Let's just keep it funky. A street bitch. I guess where I'm from, he isn't. Because no grown man talks about another grown man behind their back in a public forum or setting without the other man being present. Make it make sense. He's a guy who clearly don't know me, who clearly thinks I'm some sort of actor, and clearly thinks he knows me or my kind, which is a white boy who speaks the truth about any and everybody, any and everything. Some bitches can't handle the truth. Social media has allowed for bitch-made cats to be protected in this soft-ass world we have created. They can talk shit, make racial comments. Let's just keep it funky. He said JB and Matt are dummies and Big Smitty needs to leave the show. So clearly we know what his narrative is. So he has made comments that Big Smitty needs to get off the show, blah, 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 blah. Basic Ryan Clark, Stephen A. Smith, you know, race baiting shit. This ignorant idiot is always talking about me on his channel. He needs to go ask somebody because I think he would be in for a rude awakening when he finds out who I am and what I do and who I stand for and what I stand for. But anyways, I will continue to tell the truth about any and everybody, any and everything, like it or not. I don't give a fuck. You are a bitch and your channel is straight plagiarism. <laughs> This cat sounds like Millie Vanilli and Meek Mill all in one. He just used other people's shit to make a show. It's called Jealous One's Envy. Don't let another man affect you. It is very, very bitch made. But let's get into the show. Uh, We got a loaded one. Don Staley says men should be able to play women in college hoops. But then on the other side says Caitlin Clark needs to win the natty to be considered the GOAT. Huh? (laughs) <laughs> make it make sense the finals are set UConn versus Purdue the two best teams face off tonight hope for a good game but won't be surprised if the eclipse cuts it off we don't see shit maybe I don't know who knows what's going on there but I won't be surprised if UConn blows them out sorry to Big Smitty who bet Purdue Michael Parsons uh time could be coming to an end in Dallas the Patriots Lock down another homegrown player and safety Duggar to a $58 million deal. And the Colorado Buffaloes continue to rock the bling bling. And Dion is pissed that his kids aren't taking class seriously. <laughs> In breaking news, though, John Calipari leaving Kentucky for Arkansas. Same league, same division. Wow. The college basketball landscape will see a sudden shift after tonight's game in my prediction let that sink in what i just said after tonight's national championship game i believe college basketball landscape is going to see a huge shift we're going to dive into that the nationals strasburg retires after age 35 says he left it all out there on the court or on the field on the diamond and the lakers Winners of 9 of 10 before last night. Now make it 9 of 11. Move ahead of the Kings, and then they go right back behind the Kings. Meaning that the Warriors game tomorrow is a critical one to see who plays in that 10-9 playing slot. The NBA is coming down to the wire. Big games to the side, playing, seedings, etc. We're going to dive into that today. UFL played this past weekend. Good football. I got both picks right, uh, of course, on winnable. I must say, it's better than expected. My kid, Delrick Abrams, who was on Last Chance U, got himself a pick on Saturday. And several of my other players balled out in uh, both of those Saturday and Sunday games. But before we begin, my wonderful co-host, Self-Esteem, Ball State legend, Naptown's finest, 3174 East Side, great. AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving, LeBron hairline having, Fox Sports very own. Please welcome my main man, the quiet one, Big Smitty, to the show. 
Vinny, you might have to get evicted today. You might have to get evicted today. You might just have to say, fuck it. Because we, I know I'm going to get you riled up. I know it's not fair to you. I feel bad. We got to get in the studio. Hopefully, we get in the studio soon. If some of you guys bet, uh, come on over to Winnable and become uh, first down members, maybe we get a studio and we can straight scrap. We could go fight. We could fight live and it still be cool afterwards. I like live. Because you could fight and it should still be cool to later. I don't know if they, they don't understand that now. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in that era too. You, you know, I, me, you fight, I would win, of course, knock you out, boom, help you up. Now we good. We eating tacos, we we drinking, we got cigars, we good to go. Sometimes as a man, you just gotta fight. You know what I'm saying? So, but listen, yo, I'm like, I'm locked and loaded. I'm ready for this you said show. Knock me out. You said what? You said knock me out and then get, just go about your life, like. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, I knock you out, but like I would wake you up. Like we still be cool though. You know what I'm saying? Like we still be good. <laughs> that would be funny. Hey, what'd you say? I, hey, I'm ready for the show, though. I know the rundown is crazy. I know we about to debate off the bat. We about to show everybody. We about to tell. What? I don't want. I don't want to say. I know we about to argue. I just seen the why, rundown. Why, why are we about to argue? Because I just see a few things that that's racist. That's, racist. I'm racist. already knowing. First racist. of all, shout out to the YouTuber. What what's his name? I forgot the guy's name. I, I don't know. He, he brother though. Shout out to my brother, man. Standing beside me, man, having my back. I'm not gonna leave the show because I really know JB's a good dude. We disagree, but that's my homie, so I ain't gonna leave the show, brother. But I appreciate you for standing and standing on business, not being scared of JB. Um, like a lot of people, a lot of people are really scared of JB. Like they're scared to say something back because they know JB gonna come at them. You a real man for standing 10 toes down, dedicating your channel to go at JB. Tell him when he's wrong. Admit when I'm right. Shout out to you, man. Bring me on your show, man. Whenever you're ready, we gonna we gonna just you know talk shop together, man. Like I said, dedicated his show to JB, and then and then gave him props. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's funny. These motherfuckers. Really, I don't know where he's from. Probably Indianapolis somewhere. Oh, uh, <laughs> probably some Midwest ass town. He sounded like he was a West Coast cat, but damn, West Coast cats. He got a little gray in his beard too. He looked like, oh, but he not. Oh, and there's no way because I was like, there's no way he's a West Coast cat because we don't. We not bitch made like that. We don't just start met, talking back behind people's backs like that without ever hitting them up first to find out if it's really truth. Is it? Is it? Is it? What? What is? It? Hey, dog, I don't agree with you. Uh, okay. But you're a nobody. How hold on, time out. How would this guy be able to reach out to you? You just say he's a nobody. So what, what are we gonna do? Send you a DM and cross the yeah, fingers I get, and hope. I get, DM, I get DMs by nobody's every day. And, you, do, and you don't read them, JB. But I got a thirty thousand a day. I mean, what am I supposed to do? The bottom line is, email me. You get you come on the show. Obviously, he, he dedicated his whole channel to my show. So you obviously know our email address to the show, the Coach JB Show at gmail.com. He could have even Smitty, come on. You know damn what this cat could have found me by now. Let's let's, let's take a listen to who this cat is. All right, but today we doing another JB video because JB's an idiot. And JB always thinks he's right. And the man is so wrong. So <laughs> I don't know why this guy is credible at anything. I know why the people that are friends with him are friends with him because he's in that circle. And once you're in that circle, it's hard kind of to get you out. But the buddy circle. <laughs> you in that circle, JB. You in that same circle you talk about with all the coaches, the, the, the what was it called the, the good boy, whatever you call it. You in that circle, JB. I'm in the good old boy network, but with all brothers though. <laughs> I mean, dog, it, I mean, motherfucker can't be more ignorant, homie. I mean, real shit. You can't be dumber. First of all, I'm looking at all his titles this morning just when they brought it up. And our great production team that brought this up and showed. And, and the motherfucker can't even spell. His titles are complete. <laughs> dog, some of that shit had me like, God damn, dog. You, you wonder why motherfuckers is just get a bad rap, homie. Because of you. You dumb, ignorant motherfucker. Your ass is on here doing a channel for others to follow, and you can't even fucking spell. And you want to try to holler at me? Come on, homie. You got me fucked up. See, grown men used to holler at grown men as grown men. Now we do this social media. We're protected by social media. This motherfucker can say whatever he wants. He knows that. This motherfucker got five videos of me on his channel. <laughs> what? I thought you... Hold on. That is... Female energy like a motherfucker, boy. I, I would I would be damn, Smitty, if I would dedicate my channel 
to another grown ass man. And Smitty, you 30 years old and you wouldn't even do it. This cat looked like he's 55 years old and he's sitting there doing it. He yo OG. He must be thirsty to the motherfucker. What y'all say? Thirsty? A motherfucker thirsty as hell. He's trying to do whatever. He's trying to do whatever to get his channel popping. You that mad that I tell the truth and tell my opinion? You got a clearly you got an opinion. Why don't you just do a channel about your opinion? I, I don't get it. Like, why are you worried about me? I got my opinion. That's why I do a show. You got your opinion. You do a show. I don't understand why you got to bring up other motherfuckers. I wish I could just take someone else's YouTube channel and put it on our show. I thought that was illegal. Right. And just, we get a strike for showing anything. This motherfucker is showing my whole channel. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, homie. Hey, it is what it is. I feel, I, I appreciate him. Clap it up for him. All right. <laughs> Clap it up for him. He is clearly, I mean, listen, I want to get your address on me. I'm going to send you a bottle of Lysol uh, because you clearly need like a reservoir of Lysol because my balls is in your jaws like a motherfucker and you need to get them out. You need to get them out. You, you know, you ever heard that girl on them, she's sucking them balls up. That, that always that noise they make, you got to pull them out, bruh. Homie, you got to pull them out. And anytime you want to holler at me, come on over 1902 East Palmer, Lutus Park, California, Compton, homeboy, on mines. Anytime, homeboy. That's what y'all don't get. Y'all think this is an actor talking. I ain't gonna lie, JV. Please. I just, I just put my homeboy down to rest Friday in Lutus Park. Come holler at me, homeboy. Like, you a bitch. You motherfuckers is bitches. Talking about a grown man like this. Homie, come see me any motherfucking time, any motherfucking where. See, I don't hide. I'm not hard to find. Dion. <laughs> you ain't gonna lie, JB. I saw hard to find, I saw you, I saw your picture. I saw your picture online. And like, obviously you, was, you at your homeboy's funeral. So like that's the sad part, of course. Like obviously, but I saw it was you with like just seven just real ones. I said, yeah. I said JB really ain't like I know y'all be thinking JB be playing and he he ain't really from Compton. He ain't really grow up like nah, JB for real. Like he really grew up with these cats and was out here with them. It ain't, you know it ain't even the cat. It ain't even about the cats. Like go, go, go find out uh, who I need to talk to. JB. Like I mean, there's a lot. Like you could ask like celebrities who I've actually had to like help out. Hey, hey dog, hey, hey, uh, hey, big week. You know, uh, you know, Matt over here, my boy. Uh, can you look out for him when he's out here in the, in the city? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, what'd you say to him? <laughs> I'm just saying, cats on up. You know, it's all good though. See, that's what it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, you know, I posted that video, obviously. Uh, uh, like, there's some cats in that picture that, you know, I, I, you know, they don't even have social media. There's right. it's for a reason, because that's who they are. They, they are some of the most OG cats in Compton um, that you and, and people know who they are. And this ain't no whatever the fuck these guys that go on these podcasts are. See, that's the thing about it, as people don't understand these these cats that go on. uh what is that shit? The one with the broad, the, the porn star broad, and the dude, the weirdo uh, cluck clucking or whatever it's called with the yeah, Adam, Adam, Adam twenty nine or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the brother that go on there? The blood cap from uh, Pacoima. Um, big homie with the um. <sighs> Dang, I know you talking about. I can't remember his name. I know you talking about, but like you're yeah. not joking though. Like this is this is for real. Like this is life. This is this is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And first of all, you don't go on. You don't go on the internet, dog, talking about what you do and what you are. Like, those cats in that picture? <laughs> go ahead. I bet you them motherfuckers ain't on no podcast. <laughs> I'm going to get them on the porch. That shit is crazy to me, dog. Like, it's 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 crazy to me that these cats really are about that. This, I, I truly believe social media has changed the world. And I always say that on the show. You know, I said, my president, I'm taking that shit away, at least for a year. I truly believe it's changed the world because it's created. It's created. Let's call old boy that came at me talking shit an OG. Because mm -hmm. he's older, right? Yeah. We don't know his background. And I don't yeah. give a fuck. He, let's call him an OG. You an OG, homie. 
you giving everybody underneath you a badass name. You an OG talking like a bitch about other men behind their back, mm. doing videos and shit. Mm. I wish I would. I would holler at somebody first, dog. This is why you don't get nobody on your show besides only the folks that you know. They, Kirk Kerbstreet ain't coming on this show. Right. If he thought that this was a true idiot who's just looking for clicks and likes. Right. Ryan it has Erlinger to be. And John Daly and the fucking A-list guests that we get on this show. Right. Wouldn't come on this show if I didn't have some sort of credibility. Exactly. So it blows my mind that cats want to talk about other cats they have no clue about. And then the cat talking about, oh, he only DM'd them because they know each other from the game. <laughs> Matt just interviewed Dion like for a fucking two hours, dog. And he's an alum. Matt is a Colorado alum who played in the NFL. Hold on. What what did he say about Matt? He said Matt only DM'd him. Dummy. Matt's the di- biggest dummy. He come talk shit about Dion. Like this... The cat is a race baiter, homie. He, like, at least come with some credibility. You don't even know me. You don't know Matt. Stop. Stop. You don't know shit about us, homie. That's what makes you even... That's why I have even more cringe, whatever they call that, the young cat, cringe vibes. <laughs> now you call it that. Because <laughs> you don't even you don't even do no research, dog. You are an irresponsible journalist because that's what you are now. You have a YouTube channel, and some idiot kid can hop on your channel because of whatever you stand for, he may stand for the same thing and right. follows your channel. And now you're spewing nothing but dumb shit out of your fucking mouth. Like it makes no sense. But anyway, that's all the credit I wanted to give that idiot. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Quote of the day, but my bet online.ag. What up, what up, what up, man? The real coach JB here for the coach JB show with big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course. For the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today, become part of the team, and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. All right, quote of the day. Uh, Ryan Eller said, to be honest, JB, this is why people do this crap. You give them a little attention and time and energy. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. This is what I want to do. Like, why don't y'all just understand that by now? <laughs> if you come at me, see, you're all so easy to just, uh, stay quiet. Just close a blind eye. Put a bl- Just leave a blind eye to it. This is why, homie, that our young kids continue to go down the path they go down. Because y'all allow the minority to control the majority by staying silent. Mm -hmm. I'm not staying silent, homie. Don't come at me. Y'all don't understand. Start none won't be none. See, y'all think you can start some shit now in this generation, and then there's no repercussion. There's no consequence to your action. There is with me. Don't start none, won't fucking be none. You're not from where I'm from. There's a different mentality. I'm wired different. You fucks don't get it. So stay in your lane, watch the show, enjoy it. I'll do me. You can't ever match my energy. You can never match my passion. You can never match my realness. You can never match my fucking authenticity. 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 I'm on a flow. I was on. I was flowing and I fucked it up. God damn it! I hate fucking up words. God. 
You know what, y'all? Stop commenting in the chat. Just watch. Don't say nothing else. Russian show. Don't, no more comment. Just watch. Don't say nothing else. Starting now. No more comments. Starting now. All right, JB, take, take it over. Go back. Go back. We got it. We got it. Quarter half day. don't like Smitty. Half don't like me. The the brother show. The brother that we just talked about loves Smitty. You know, we can never we can never find somebody. I think me and you were so opposite. I guess that we can't find nobody that just likes us both. Is either you like JB or like we really are hot or cold, fire and ice. Like you Here's really- the cold part though. Dog, there's more comments about oh Smitty gotta go. Smitty, uh, 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 Smitty's out. Uh, 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 I'm like, I'm sitting there like all the time. Uh, homie, but I'm sitting there like you motherfuckers all want your cake and eat it too. Every single person commenting is a fucking nobody. You don't pay. You're not even ha- half of you aren't members. You're no fucking contributor. And then you want me to do the show by myself again that I did for three or four years. I don't want to do it anymore by myself, motherfuckers. Shut <laughs> up. Come do it with me. Come produce the show. Come pay for my studio. All you motherfuckers want to talk that shit, but don't do shit. Right, right. There is a contrast to every show that is good. And if it's an agree, I was just talking to every one of my homeboys the other day at the funeral. And they all said, hell, Smitty, you need Smitty. Smitty needs you. It's a hell of a fucking contrast. This is what it is now. It's a fucking debate show. Whether it's a debate that day or not, it's a debate show. And it's like, dog, you want me to get on here and have just Steve Kim on? So we only agree. <laughs> the whole show. You motherfuckers are stupid. That's, why they, that's why they get mad at me, JB. Hey, Smitty, this is why these cats out there have accepted these mediocre shows. Right. Because they want everyone to say the same shit towards their narrative. No. Right. I'm going to give you the right side. Smitty will give you the left side. Even though Smitty not super far left woke and you guys all right. think he is. Y'all think he is. I really he ain't. Fox, you idiots. <laughs> Go pay him his salary then. Like, you motherfuckers so ignorant. Go pay his motherfucking salary then in his, in his, in his car note and his fucking mortgage. And then do that. Get us a studio, and then you can talk. I'll give you some show rights. Even I'll give you fucking stock in the motherfucker. They call me fake because like there's certain things that like yeah I, I take a step back because I work at Fox. Like it's common sense at some point, y'all. Everything I do here is 100 percent real. But yeah, there's certain things I'm like yeah JB, you can say whatever because you got that freedom. Yeah, I don't. That's common sense. Are we Eddie, not all adults in here? Eddie, I don't. I don't have to go anywhere after this. I could smoke cigars in my beautiful cigar lounge and studio. I could go in the theater and watch a fucking 250 inch movie. I can go outside and putt golf and hit the driving range at my fucking house. I could walk up my stairs, run up my stairs, fucking golf, get my little exercise. Put put, you go put put on the slapstick basketball court. I could uh put put put. I mean, I could go barbecue. I could smoke some. I could do the. Whatever, dog. I don't have to leave. I Darius, they, 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 hate, they hate I on your boy, probably, Darius. They hate on your boy. I probably put Smitty in a bad spot most of the time. Oh, I know I do. I put Smitty in a bad spot most of the time because of who I am. So I actually commend Smitty for fucking staying around. You yeah, motherfuckers really. want him to go. It's fucking, you guys all want your cake and eat it too. And you wonder why the, the country so fucking divided because you motherfuckers all want it one way. It used to be both ways, Smitty. We used to be Republican and Democrat, white and black, and motherfuckers would argue, and there would be no ill will when they left that night. Mm. Now, motherfuckers is, is you red, you blue, you right, you left, you uh, because it's never been this so tilted. It's never been this tilted one way or the other. The left and the right usually had some sort of common ground in back when I was a kid. Because we grew up Democrats. Because back in the day, Democrats were broke, yep. Republicans were rich, and that's how you defined it. Yep. Period. Anything like, there was no, it had nothing to do with made up humans, and it had nothing to do with gay rights, it had nothing to do with equity. It was broke over here, rich. rich over here. And guess what? My dad hated the rich because we from the hood. My dad hated the rich. And that's all we talked about. We didn't talk about shit up, but they definitely, the Democrats at that time, we were the gu- the nutty gutty from the mud cats. We definitely wasn't sighing with no made up human shit. We definitely wasn't on the side of no men playing women in sports. 
Nowadays, if you're a Democrat, you got to love trans, love men playing women in sports, love the rainbow, love the alphabet mafia. On the right side, you got to hate all that shit. (laughs) It never used to be this way, homie, because we ain't had no leadership anywhere. And everyone expects you to be this way only. And if you turn left, you're only that way. And now it's gotten so out of hand because we have no leadership that the world is so fucked up. And now they think, oh, people see back in the day, Smitty, we wouldn't, there would have never even been a discussion of women playing football and the women would never even wanted to do it. They wouldn't even ask, huh? Nowadays, the left, if we're going to say the left, I hate even using the left and the right. The left is going to say, they put that in there in your, they put that in your brain. Oh, well, uh, women could play any sport. They could do anything, but they can't build a house. (laughs) Like, Hold up. No, they can't do anything. Like, that's what I'm saying. And they shouldn't. And men shouldn't do everything a woman does. Like, I just don't understand why today it's become all inclusive. And if you don't like that shit, you got to turn right or left. And that's it. Like, so you're telling me back in the day, Smitty, you and I couldn't even do a show together. We couldn't. Because we must be living segregation. Like, what the (laughs) fuck are we talking about here? You keeping it real right now, JB. You uh, keeping it real. We didn't even start the show yet. I didn't even get the quote of the day, Smitty. Uh, my bad. Uh, I must have got good sleep because I'm right. You, you ain't been. You must have got some good AE sleep, food, everything. You hyped yeah. today, boy. A dream doesn't become reality because of magic. It takes sweat, determination, hard work, along with some fucking nuts and guts. That's my quote of the day, JB. <laughs> you got a grind. Dream- Become reality because of magic. It takes sweat, determination, hard work, along with some fucking nuts and guts. That's what makes a dream work, Smitty. Contrary to belief. That's my whole life. Life is always a test. <laughs> That's it. That's contrary to belief. <laughs> my drop. Life right is there. always a test. Jeez. I got one more, though. Contrary to belief. Brought to you by Bet Online and Prize Picks. You will never feel truly satisfied by work. Until you are satisfied by life. Mm. Contrary to belief. See, Smitty. That's real. People want me to change. But then I wouldn't be satisfied by my life. Why would I change? Why why would you want me to not be satisfied? Why would I want Smitty not to be satisfied in his life? Why would I want him to change? This is who he is. This is who I am. Oil and water. And this is what makes great banter, in my opinion. This is what barbershop banter has always been growing up in the hood. This mm-hmm. is what it's always been. I don't understand when that became a problem. And by the way, yeah, there used to be some fisticuffs. We used to scrap. We used to, cats even made pull out a strap. But the bottom line is cats usually left the barbershop hugging and dapping it up and laughing. To be- and they might, we had mama jokes. We had talk about your hood, my hood. There's real heated arguments in a barbershop. Yeah. But nowadays, dog, you got these young cats going in there so scared to argue because once you scare, once you argue with them, they feel offended and they'll go get a strap out the car. These motherfuckers are so soft because of the emotional room. The adults have allowed this shit, not the kids. The kids are who they are. They know what they know, don't know what they don't know. This is why the adults in the room have failed at every level, every race, every gender. I don't give a fuck what it is. The adults have failed, period. But it is what it is. Poll question, Smitty. What does Caitlin Clark do? Return to the, return college, go to the WNBA, or do they, does she go to the big three and take Ice Cube's five million? Mm. Poll question, what does Caitlin Clark do? Return to college, WNBA, or the big three? Drop it in the comments below. Um, I WNBA, mean, y'all. Come on now. I saw, I know the conversation going on, but this is like, it, it's an interesting conversation and discussion. Is it because of Whitlock's post? Yeah, it's because of Whitlock. Shout out to Whitlock's because of what Whitlock's post. Let me see it. In a nutshell, he was saying that from, from a money perspective, Caitlin Clark should go back to college, make about $20 million in NIL, retire from basketball, marry her boyfriend, and move on in life. She said he basically said she should not go to, to WNBA because it's going to be a lot of like he, he didn't use the word hell. I can't remember what the term he used, but it's going to be like 
hell waiting for basically saying because you know there's some jealous women and there's gonna be women there just trying to like prove themselves against her and really go at her neck you know from the beginning to try to show that she ain't really like that you know etc but my thing is number one like I, I, from a money perspective i hear what like saying but first of all can could caitlin clark come back like did she just complete her four years or did she get red shirted she come back COVID gave everybody another year so she got another year okay so cool i want to get that clear boom but come on, outside of that though, like I get a money standpoint. I think the brand deals aren't going anywhere though, even at the WNBA level. Indiana's going to love her. She's the perfect fit for Indiana, just being real. Being a Hoosier, she gonna get all type of local deals, big brand deals, still gonna be around. They're not going nowhere. I think she gonna she's gonna be the outlier in the WNBA where she's still gonna be making a huge amount of money, even at the WNBA, just because of the brand that she's already built. Here's Whitlock quote right here. Caitlin Clark should return to Iowa next season, make about $20 million in the NIL, retire from basketball, marry your boyfriend, and avoid the nastiness that awaits her in the WNBA. I'm not joking. I hear what he's saying, but, I, you know, Bailey, we were talking about this in the chat yesterday. Like, I think you asked me my opinion. He's like, should she really do it? I said it depends on what her why is. If her purpose of playing basketball is strictly to make money, yeah. Go ahead and do that. Come back, make 20 mil, whatever you can make, and then move on. But if you're wise because you truly love the game, and this is a lifelong dream that you worked for since you were a little kid, you gotta go, you gotta go play pro. Like it was my dream playing in the NFL. Of course, money was a big piece because I wanted to take care of my mom and get them out the hood, like every every other broke black kid's dream. But beyond that, I truly loved and loved the game of football and what it brought to me. So I wanted to go to the next level just from, from a standpoint of all the hard work I put in. That's my dream. For Kenneth Clark to go back to college and then just say, all right, I'm done, that ain't love for the game. That's just love of the perks that come with it. And I don't think she's that type of person. At all. I, I, I'll, go, I'll go from the limb and say I know she ain't that type of person. You know, Based upon what I've seen, her approach to the game, how competitive, how fiery she is. Yeah, it's going to be tough, that transition to the WNBA. She's, she has to get stronger, figure out the pace, et cetera. But she's a dog. Caitlin's going to figure it out quick, quickly, too. Halfway through her rookie season, I think she'll figure it out, and she'll start going back to the Caitlin that we see in college. But no way I think she, she should even consider this. Um, I think she loves the game the way I love football. And money is important, very important. But it ain't everything, and she's gonna make a uh, still gonna make a lot of money because of the brands ain't going nowhere. She's still Caitlin Clark. So the WNBA's average base salary, I think, is around 75, 78 grand. Yeah. All right. So she's clearly making more now in college. Mm -hmm. So why does she go back to college? She goes back to college for what? To used to be, I, I want to win a chip with my teammates. Blah blah blah. There's no right. more of that. There's no more of that. There's no way she's thinking that now. Right. You could say women and men are different and they're wired differently is maybe a woman knows that her she's never going to make the 200 and 500 million dollars in this business because, you know, it's a man's world when it comes to this money and, and athletics. Right. But she can make a lot. She can make generational wealth in college, how the landscape currently is with NIL and um, endorsements. She goes to WNBA. She's going to make her base salary of 75 K. It's almost an unwatchable league for the majority of the country. I know you and a lot of other folks love the WNBA. I can't watch it. I just think they should do some things to adjust the viewership. I think they should do some things to make it more exciting. Like when a woman gets a breakaway, she should be able to dunk. I mean, I think that it totally uplifts the sport, but they won't do it. Uh, the, see, the women want to have... The women want to be feel they want to feel equitable. And this is no knock. I don't I'm not mad at Candace Parker when her and Shaq go at it. Like Shaq said, lower the rim, get a smaller ball. And she's like, fuck you. Why? I get it. Do you want to be on you stand on business? All right, go ahead. But let's keep it funky. If you broke away and dunked, we're gonna watch you more. Like, period. I don't care. The men will you'll get a bigger, different audience, in my opinion. If she goes to WNBA, in my opinion, I think she should be great. And then WNBA should play a few years. I I, I just think, and then she'll just kind of like, you know, feather away. I, I don't think her longevity in the WNBA, I don't think you can sustain a watch, meaning mm -hmm. her shooting threes all day in the WNBA. Is that is that drawing 
millions every day in the professional sport level. Why why did it draw in college? Because college basketball has has been, let's be honest, it hasn't had that star since UConn was on their run, since South Carolina now is on their run. But South Carolina, they have some good players, but they don't have like the one what UConn superstar. used to have on their runs. When UConn was going, you know, undefeated every year, they had stars. South Carolina has a great nucleus and team and plays great basketball, but they don't have that one star. They got a great story with the broad that left Brazil and came over here on her own. And and, and, and great story. But she's not like a star. She's 6'7". She's a dominant, and she's pretty hard to move around in the paint for a woman. But she's not a star. She's not Lobo. She's not any of those people back then. So for me to just watch Caitlin Clark shoot threes, I, I couldn't do it. I didn't watch the game. No offense to the women out there. I didn't watch the game yesterday. I was cleaning the house. But I'm just saying, like, there's so much. I was cleaning the house. There's so much shit going. What? Oh, my bad. He said I didn't watch the game. I was cleaning the house. That well, was more important than, than, than I mean, shit. I was just being honest. Um, <laughs> it was crazy. Sundays when I, so, 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 so I clean on Sunday. Real quick. I clean on Sundays every Sunday. The only day I won't clean is the Super Bowl. On a Sunday. Really? So I clean on all Sunday. I make sure I clean Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Suck I don't think week off smooth. I don't think the NBA finals is ever gonna be on a Sunday. So I always clean on Sunday. So if it, unless it's Super Bowl, I, I I'm not a void. I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a clean the house. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, JB, about Kalen, but I, I believe in every sport at some point there's there's a turn in which a player or players can change the the altitude of that game. Let's take it back to the NBA. And you noticed more than me because you you were living it. The NBA was not doing great before Magic and Bird got there. It was just wasn't. Raiders weren't, weren't doing great. They were considering. They didn't know what they was going to do with the direction of it. It's out there. We can we can read it. We can read it in the history. It's, it's there. We can read it. Uh, it was Dr. Back. G and Moses Malone. The transition was happening. But, but I'm it, saying Raiders. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what the numbers say. It's all. I'm, I'm just. I'm a numbers guy. The I'm NBA saying. was always going to get back i mean we think but i'm saying at that point in time the numbers wasn't really it wasn't the nba wasn't popping like that they say magic and birds saved the nba now you could be figuratively speaking i don't know but that 80s era changed the 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 direction of the nba for jordan follow jordan Jordan came right after exactly okay but i'm just saying at some point it takes it takes somebody it takes a big rivalry it takes that star it takes something or somebody to change the altitude change the direction whatever of that sport i think caitlin clark has the star power and the skill set to do that at the next level i'm putting it all i'm investing in caitlin clark i think that she can truly her i think this class in general is coming in big personalities with angel reese uh caitlin clark you got uh, uh you got cameron brink uh, you got some real stars, and even in the next in the, in the coming years, the next two years, you got Juju coming up. I just think that these next generation of stars coming to WNBA will be able to take the WBA to the next level, coupling them with some of the already veterans who are already been playing, like the AJ Wilson, who's a baller, and then for the Aces, things like that. I think their the trajectory is going to the next level. You're seeing more women talk on TV. Uh, Ch- uh, Shanae Ogumake is a beast on ESPN who's also playing at the same time. I just think we're seeing the growth slowly but surely. But I think Kevin Clark will be that one person that kind of takes it to that next level. What is that next level? I don't know what exactly what, how big the jump will be, but she will cause a jump. As JB cusses out someone on TikTok very quietly. But I'm listening to you. Um... See, I don't just hear, I listen. And I could cut someone else out and I could do certain things. A lot of daddies in this world should have pulled out. And that is how I look at the world. A lot of daddies out there should have pulled out and just sprayed a mama face. That is what the problem is in society today. Like, what's wrong with pulling out and just splattering your girl face? That is what a lot of you men should have done. Instead, though, oh, it feels too good. I can't pull it out. Well, you just made a fucking tard. <laughs> you just fucking made an absolute idiot and put him in my way in the line and shopping. <laughs> so when I'm shopping, I look at your kid and I look at him and I want to see his daddy so I could absolutely fucking mud stomp him and slap the shit out of his daddy because he created you and put you in this fucking world in my way. 
God. I got a violation on TikTok. Oh, shocker. Oh, you think? <laughs> you think? If you ever deserve a violation, if you ever deserve a violation, that's, that's, that's the one time you deserve it. He didn't shut off my live, though. That tells you why it's so dumb, Smitty. Like, they pick and choose. Like, I'm testing it myself. I want to test TikTok today. And see what and works like, and what don't. Like, they haven't banned me yet. But last week, they banned me in six seconds, and I didn't even cuss. It's unbelievable. It's how it's how soft we become, dog. It's, it's, I'm proving it. That's why I, you know what I'm saying. They they just it's a it's a it's unbelievable. I don't even get into it. But I want to dive into Don Staley. Oh. Don Staley says that men should play in women's hoops. Um, I know you don't even agree with that. Uh, I don't. But I got a different angle. But go ahead and play. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you're fucking twisted. So I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. I hear you. I hear you. Right, let's, let's listen to what she said, Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Outkick, Coach, you just talked about, you know, what a massive weekend this is, obviously, for women's basketball, women's sports in general. One of the major issues facing women's sports right now is the debate discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes, biological males in women's sports. I was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue. Um. Damn, you got deep on me, didn't you? She th I thought it was Smitty. She had to take a sip. She swallowed. She stutters. If you know the answer, Smitty, oh, they banned me on TikTok. Again, I didn't say nothing. They banned me on nah, TikTok. Nah, you nah. You said something this time. You said something. You just went off on a whole tangent about how you should but pull why out. And, and Why and, they didn't do it earlier, though? Because they take some a little bit of the AI takes a little time for them to like really look back and review what you just said. And they say, Oh, yeah, we got to. You said, You said tar. You said a lot. So they they banned you. I said, What? You said, You know what you said? I don't want to get banned on YouTube. All right. If you don't know the answer, real quick, when you ask me something, Smitty, I'm going to tell you. Boom. You can't always answer me right away because you have affiliations with other pl places that affect your livelihood. So, mm -hmm. so people don't understand that anyone out there that says that is dumb. So she either a just don't answer. Probably should have did that. Or you answer. But there's no if you had to think about it, then you you need to not answer. Can I jump in real quick before we even press play? I know you're gonna press play. But I, I this has been on my chest since yesterday. Obviously, I disagree with her answer. So that's obvious. That's the obvious answer. But to me, I'm pissed off as at the journalists who even presented this question in the first place. There was no context. There was no reason to bring this up. They're talking about the national t title game coming up, how the women's sports is growing, the growth of the game, how legend, how the chance to go undefeated season. It's, these are all like questions about the game itself and out the blue. This man wants to use that and ask her opinion about trans playing in the in the in the sport. You got to ask yourself why, because in this era of going viral and blowing up, people want to ask whatever question they possibly can to do just that. So he knows that. Oh, if I ask Don Staley a question about about the trans community, no matter what answer she gets or she gives. It's going to blow up my brand. I'll be able to use this to leverage it to grow, you know, et cetera. So I just think what happened was, and she did a poor job of answering the question. I I, I will admit that she, I don't agree with the, the answer at all. But if you see her cadence and how she was, she paused, she took a drink of water. She stuttered for a long time. Like it, once we played it, you'll see it took her a while to even answer the question because she didn't know how to answer it. And I think he kind of put her in a corner and she got stuck and she just was like, if, if, if you if you're a woman, you should be able to play. First but, of all, I commend the guy that asked her because this is a hot topic right now in sports, and this is why he asked her. Man. Here's my combatment to your take, and I understand your take, but let's be keep it 100. Like y'all say, you wanted you want this thing to stay real. Let's be real. So Kim Mulkey can be asked this question before she played UCLA, and nobody tripped. She can be asked and have a whole hit piece written about her before she played UCLA. Why ain't nobody tripping, homie? Why ain't nobody tripping on Kim Mulkey having to get her team ready to play UCLA when an L.A. beat writer writes a story in a hit piece, when the Washington Post does a whole hit piece on her and nobody said nothing? Let's it was a big, 
It was a big thing, though. What you talking about? Uh, but but uh, no, nobody came out like this talking about her response. She had a response, too. And what'd she say? I'm going to do a prayer on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. And I'm going to have everybody do a prayer. And I don't care what they do. I don't care the denomination. I don't care if they're Muslim, Christian, Catholic. They're going to do a, their own prayer. So we're not tripping off of what she said about the prayer in this society right now with all this religion hoopla going on. But yet when we ask a transgender question, it's a fucking up in arms debate about her answer. Like that's how tilted the country and the world is. There's no more God in Jesus. Now we're worried about what a man biologically is born on this earth is like what? So Kim Mulkey can be absolutely castrated and no issue, but Don Saley can't be asked a tough question. Now, listen, either ask no question and I'll tell you no lie. Number one, or don't ask these questions. That's bad from your PR group in your school, because usually you allow certain people to ask certain questions live in front of you in podiums questions like this. They usually have an idea on what's going to happen and they don't choose to pick you uh, or that's how yeah. it goes, though. Mostly there's a PR question. There's a PR guy, Smitty. And just so you know, the NFL does it. The NBA does it. They walk used, in the room. I, I, I used to I used to cover. I used to do this, though. Will I put me you on? Know, I, I used to do the Lakers, question. Clippers, Chargers. And I, and they didn't, you know, they didn't necessarily is? know what I was going to ask. You know how it, I, I know, yeah. but they still ask, what is the topic of your question and what are you going to do? And if you say it, we're going to just say next. We See, back in the day, we used to just say next. You, I mean, you used to watch NFL, NBA coaches all the time. Uh, next. They wouldn't even answer the question. She could have said, ah, next. Shut up. Like, she could have just said, shut up. But you know she would have got castrated for that, too. It was a lose-lose situation. You say next, oh, Don Sally doesn't want to speak on the Maybe. trans community. Like, you can't you know be, that. You know it. But you can't be a hypocrite, dog. That's the, this is what, see, this is why you lose anything that you gain, in my opinion. Mm. Like, we become, we get in our feelings so much nowadays because of the fact that you, you don't answer it, you're damned. If you do answer it, you're damned. We've been saying that forever, right? We've always right, said that. Right. This is not a new thing. The problem I have is you cannot be a hypocrite with what you stand on. If you stand on business, stand on business. Yeah. So she came out and said what she said. She feels, regardless of whatever the reason is behind it, okay? I've seen a dumbass. I've seen a million dumbass comments about why she said it, Okay. Well, she's going to start recruiting men. No, she's going to start she's blah, 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 whatever. She the highest paid woman's coach right now. That's the reason why she said that. She ain't and messing with her way, back. Governor of South Carolina came out and said, we don't stand up. We don't believe in what she's saying. And so, nobody that should be representing this state. Like, it's political. I told you to start the show. So now her own governor and 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 people in South Carolina, which we know are part of the state, she is now like in hot water with them people because they're not hand, they're not that's not a state that wants men to play women in anything. So anyway, she's got her own shit to deal with. But here's my point on this whole thing. She came out and said what she said, but in the same tongue. She said that Caitlin Clark needs to win the natty to even be in the discussion of the GOAT. Now, dive deep into that, Smitty, and I want you to give me what you think that means. I hear what you're saying. You're saying, on, okay, on one end, you're saying you're, it's okay for biological men to play our sport. But at the same token, you're saying a biological woman has to win it all to be considered a GOAT. So hypothetically, if the, if the biological men were currently playing in our game right now, you were saying that it, it don't even matter. She still has to play through the men in order to win. Only counter to that, though, JB, is that there's no men playing right now, and this is her last game. Like, this is her last game. So, like, in the, in the essence of this particular person, like, the it, it makes sense because there's no men playing. Like, I get what you're saying, but so I'm saying she, there's no men it, playing, yeah. though, right now. So it's, like, nah, it's infected. Let's see what she said. I, I, I'm on the, I mean, I'm on the, the <laughs> on, bro, opinion bro. of, Come on, of. Walk away, Smitty. I know she's trying to think of every. If you're a woman, you should play. Pause if it you real quick. yourself a woman. She, you see that? You see what she was going you through? Her mom was trying to like. 
No, She's there's no considering yourself a woman, Smitty. Like, that's the first fundamental problem. I know. I this know. is the first fundamental issue, though, that I she know. faces right now. I know. You don't, there's no considering yourself a woman. I know. I know. Because she knows there's no that. way my fucking daughter is going to go play for you, and you are okay with her playing against a man. She's not, JB. I, like, you know, me and you are really good at re reading people, Jay. We do it every single, every single show. And you're right. She should have stood on business, technically speaking. But JB, you, you you've been blackballed, so you know how this thing works. Some people don't, they're not trying to get blackballed. This their livelihood. There's certain things. This certain, if you ask me right now about about I'm not there's certain things I'm not about to say either. Because I'm not about to get fired right now. People gotta live their life. You right, she shouldn't she should have not answered it, but you a coach, JB. Not you getting, know how this game works, JB. She's the hottest coach in basketball. Exactly. She don't want to mess not that up. Fired, Smitty. If she were to, if she's a person, see, this is what's called transcending. This is a transcending moment. This is a definable moment. This is a moment that you put your footprint in the stand in the sand and it lasts forever. This is one of those moments. I've had mm. a few of those in my life. A lot of us have had those moments. We either floundered them away, meaning we let them sink, or we adhered to the public opinion and said what everyone wants to hear. Yeah. Even though that's not what everyone wants to hear. The minority, again, controls the majority because the majority won't speak up. Here's the here's the here's my point. She had a moment to put her footprint in the sand as the biggest face in on planet Earth in the women's basketball game, probably top five in the men's game, too. As far as total basketball, she's one of the most recognizable faces in basketball. She had the moment to define what her sport, her, the key word, operative word, her, meant to her and her female participants and the recruits that are coming down the pipe that are female, born naturally. If she were to get fired from that job because of her political beliefs, Smitty, first of all, you're not going to fire a, a black female coach, number one. Number two. All right, all right. Smitty, Smitty let's be real. Keep it 100. Black women ain't above LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah. She is both. <laughs> She's both. Time out. She's both. Number one. I didn't. Oh, I, did, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Number that. two. Know number two, was, Smitty. Yeah. Number two, Smitty. She would have a job today. You know fucking well. You stand for an Oregon State, Oregon. They're hiring her today. She ain't getting no fucking. She's not gonna be without a job for more than twenty four hours. So make a stand and stand on something or fall for anything. You had the opportunity to stand on business and protect the women, the woman that you are, the female that you are, and you did, and you lost. You fumbled it, homie. You fumbled it bad, and you adhered to the public opinion. And she ain't getting fired, Smitty. She just won a fucking third national title or second national title. Well, she ain't Who's gonna fire her. She ain't now. I'm just saying. I, I Who's don't gonna know. fire her? She was in the final. She could have lost to Iowa yesterday. Nobody firing her. All and I she know get is job tomorrow. All tomorrow. I know is if she go out there, she stand up and say, "You know what, Smitty? I don't, I don't believe men should play our sport. If you were born man, you shouldn't play our sport." You know the whole. The, the, you know it would have went. That would have went city. mega like, viral. That would have went crazy. I, I agree with you. Come I on, we we you know what I mean? Like I would I would agree. I agree with you. you but here's me. the difference. Here's the difference. I'm blackballed because I didn't apologize. I didn't adhere. Right. I could have kept my job contrary to everyone's belief out know, there if I, I issued a, a public apology. Sure I don't know, know, Bailey, if you can pull up my original apology. It's on ESPN. It's on CNN. It's on TMZ. You can find it, Bailey, real easy. Listen to my letter that I wrote that ultimately parted ways. Once I knew when my lawyers, I knew that I had a contract and they had to pay me out. I had two choices, Smitty, and this is honest to God truth. And this is why I'm probably blackballed for life. And my agent to this day is pissed at me and everyone else is because of your rationale, your thought. I'm not going to lose my livelihood, right? When keeping it real goes wrong, JB. They should pay and, and, about and, it. And, and I, I, I could not go to, I, I, I had to listen to my dad that was passed away by then. My dad died in 05. 
But all I could hear was my dad's voice saying, you don't kiss ass. We don't kiss ass. I could not go get buried or get cremated or whatever, whenever is t- my time to go. And I went out like willy lump lump sell out human. I just couldn't do it. Here's the letter I wrote the day. Can we make it bigger or no? Um, ah, it's too tough. I can't read it. Um, fuck. Um, basically, though, I said I will never apologize about anything that I did because I didn't do anything wrong. Now, you can take that like however, right? You could take that as I'm a misogynistic. I'm narcissistic. I'm an egomaniac. I'm blah, 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 blah. But why the players tried to fucking boycott? Why did all the players want to fucking quit? Why did they leave? Why did? See, that's the thing about it. These bureaucrats and these people don't understand. I'm not apologizing for nothing because that's who I am. Mm. I, 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 why would I apologize? I didn't do. I didn't say anything that I didn't say for the last three years at that institution on Netflix. D- my twenty years prior coaching. I'm not gonna kiss ass to say something that's not me. And this is why you get people that are coming out later in life who have come out and said, "Sage still." Man, I, I interviewed ba- I interviewed Biden on ESPN. They gave me a total script. I couldn't even deviate. I had to ask exactly what was scripted, and they said if I did anything else, they'd cut the show off. And she came out now and said it, right? Yeah. She regrets that. I don't want to live in regret. Like, I just don't. That's just me, Smitty. And listen, I'm not knocking anyone that doesn't do it, and I'm not going to sit here and say you're a piece of shit or you're a pussy or you're shitty. All I'm telling you is this is who I am, and I don't believe we have enough of that. Balance. I, I don't think we have enough of that balance. This is now, a hell of a topic that, that I would love to dive deep into more, but I, I don't know how much time we got. Um, got no mask them coming on, but this is this is a hell of a topic, man. It's like finding that balance between keeping it real, basically, in a nutshell, keeping it real, meaning like whatever you believe in, stand on what you believe in, but then also trying to think about your livelihood and thinking about your family or your kids or the fact that you got stuff to take care of too and making that decision to where it's like, do I just say F that and just stand on faith and just hope that something else will come to me by standing, by being real? Do I say, unfortunately right now I can't quote unquote be real because I got to take care of, I got to keep take care of my, of my life and I, and I don't have the leverage to be a hundred percent real. So I got to stand on this side or is there a gray area in the middle where you can kind of play both sides? This is a very good like discussion, honestly, man, because this, um, what you're saying is technically right. Bailey, show it. Stuff. Bailey, yeah. Um, okay, so can you read it, Smitty? Finally, I want to thank my 2019 assistant coaches, support staff who persevered through the difficulties of past few weeks with me. Their commitment to me, to our players, and to the football, football program is what will lead to our success in 2019. They should all be applauded for this. However, the events of the past few weeks has led me to resign. Given what has most recently been allowed to transpire, it is clear that it will be nearly impossible to stay here. More plainly, the Montgomery County Chronicle has greatly diminished my ability ability to successfully do my job and has set this football program back significantly. In the cumulative effect of all these detrimental factors, I believe clearly constitute a constructive discharge of my employment. I've been working with the College of uh, with the cause to achieve greatness for three and a half years. And I believe we accomplished this. I urge all the naysayers on campus and in town to really look at yourself in the mirror and do a self-evaluation of yourself before so harshly judging others. Regardless, I can sleep at night knowing I led with my best foot forward and graduated our players. I don't care about anything else. We turn boys into men and make, and make them better human beings. I leave this position with tremendous appreciation for both the opportunity and for the experience. But more than anything, I value the many friendships made along the way. I would especially like to thank Tammy Romstad, I believe, for hiring me. And I believe in believing in the process and understanding what it takes to build a powerhouse program. History was made here and make no mistake about it. I owe all of that to you. There's more to it where I said. So basically, they said I could write an apology and then I could I would keep the job. Basically saying, you admitted to doing wrong, blah, blah, blah. I don't admit to doing wrong. I didn't do wrong. So why would I lie? And I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I've talked to more people when I used to walk, go around after my pop test way. I'd go talk to people that were on their deathbed that were dying. 
And I, I've talked to more people that regretted not being honest in their lives on their deathbed than, than I, 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 I ran into more than less. Mm. They all regret not telling the truth. Here's how I look at it. So maybe we can move on. There's a truth in the world. Two plus two is four, right? One plus one is two. Water's wet. Sky's blue. I just rhymed, didn't I? Um, okay. Those are all facts, right? Those are what you say facts, right? That's the truth. Why would I say water's dry and the sky's red? Like, I, I'm just saying, I can't do that. That's just not me. Like, I want to make sure when I pass away that I did at least the best I could do on being who I was, genuine and truthful and a truth teller. There's only one truth, dog. There's really not two truths. Two things can be true in certain instances, as you like to say, but there's not two truths. There's only one truth at the end of the day, and period. You, 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 you cheated on your wife or you didn't. You had six baby mamas or you didn't. Uh, you were broke or you weren't. You had bad credit or you don't. You were a shitbird human being or you're not. Like there's not two truths. Now, I come out all the time and say there's reason why dads get a bad rap as 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 as, as, as deadbeat fathers. I say there's reasons to certain things, but the truth is always the truth. And I just couldn't be on my deathbed saying, fuck, I wish I would have told Smitty the truth that day. I, I wish I would have told my daughter the truth that day. Well, guess what? I told my daughter the truth, and now I don't talk to her. Mm. Let that sink in. Mm. My mom just told me that she's got health issues, right? They gave her a certain amount of time to live. That just happened Friday. My mom's crazy gangster. My mom is like, she was a doctor, of course. And that's how she tells me. She just tells me laughingly. And so it's my job to rectify my relationship with my mom. I'm the son. I'm the one she birthed. If she passed away tomorrow and I didn't rectify our relationship, it's on me. I wouldn't be able to live with myself the same. It's my daughter's job to rectify her relationship with me, not the other way around. I'm not seeking out her anymore. I told her the truth. This is what it is. Same with my mom. Now, I have to go find my mom and holler at her and rectify everything I have going on with her that we don't agree with or what have you over the time. My daughter's peer, she's 26 years old, about to be. She needs to fucking figure it out because I've shown her the proof. I've given her the facts. I've given her the truth, and she denies that because her mama is the devil, and she fucking told her a bunch of lies. See, that's the thing. Her mama will have to live with herself on her deathbed. I will still live with myself, but unfortunately, the baby in this will have to understand that there's a truth and lie and which one she fell for is critical. And mm -hmm. I now, regardless, dog, if I don't agree with my mom or not, I have to go fucking rectify it because I'm the kid. I'm who she birthed out. So I have to go find that out and do that. And that's on me. My daughter has to do the same shit. And people that don't understand that are fucking idiots. And they don't realize it. Because now my mom passed away. I have to be the one that says, fuck, homie. I, I let her go and I didn't ever holler at her. I never fixed what we had beef with. I never fixed whatever. That's on the kid. It's not her job. She supported me. She did everything for me. She raised me. She birthed me. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> my daughter who I raised through college myself as a kid has to fucking realize I took her to Kansas for a reason, homie. There's a reason why your mama fucking couldn't fucking raise you. Go figure it out. And she, 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 she tried to, she came back, blah, blah, blah. And it did. And now she, she has been told more lies. And if you're a God fearing man and you understand the Bible and you know all these things, you know, the devil seeps into your thoughts every single day. Mm -hmm. And you have to wear that armor to say, get the fuck away. Mm. And you have to be a strong human being to do that. 
We don't have enough strong human beings, homie. We have a bunch of fucking yes do man, yes women out here who will believe the biggest lie in the world just to fucking say they did what was right. No, it's not. You did what was wrong. That's why I'm not going to go to jail or, or, de- or jail. Same shit. That's why I won't go to my deathbed not telling the truth every single day. And if people say, damn, this motherfucker blunt. Somebody told me that the other day in the store. They met me, blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey, someone take a picture. And I, and I said, I told the kid something about what he, how he talked to his mama. Black kid, black mama. And then, and then the dude that was, ta- was taking the picture like, damn, you blunt. And then the kid was like, that's why I want coach picture. The kid was 15. He knew. He was like, he liked that I was blunt. Because I told the kid, you tell your mama what to get to eat? Right. I said, I'd, beat the shit. I'd have smacked the shit out your motherfucking ass. You would have ate what the fuck I gave you. And the mama was laughing and shit. And I started having a whole conversation with the mama. Like, mm. Mama, don't let that shit happen. Don't fucking. Agree. You can fix it right now. He's fifteen. You can change right. it. She's like, right I know. Now. I just, you know, I'm, I'm single, Mama. What do you? How many times you hear that? I'm single, Mama. Put your foot down, Mama. He'll respect you more de- later. Yeah. But it is what it is. Anyway, um, you want to do a quick break? Get some coffee. Take a pee before our first guest come on. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, take, give us five. We'll be right back. Fire. Sorry, what Mahomes is white. No, he's not. All right, oh, listen. Is that Tomlin or Smitty? Fuck you guys. Mahomes is half white. We no, we're taking no, nah, we tell y'all. Hey, JB, keep it real. JB, keep it real. JB, JB, keep it real. Game. JB, keep it real. In the hood, when you mix, what are you? They say you're black. But... All right, stop. Well, well, they well, well, they well, say racist ass Bailey. Don't have the white fucking graphic in nah, here. There you go, Bailey. Fuck the white guys. Nice job. <laughs> oh! Look right. This just looks bad. Look at that. The that's white team doesn't that's look so fire. bad. The old white team looks awful to me. Like, I don't even want to be associated with the white team. Hey, but hold on, Matt. First of all, start up top here. Those are the coaches. Yeah! Belichick, got, Andy Reid. I got e I got e secondary. I got, I got, Thanks I got you know, on the second day. I got Bill and Jack as my head coach, Andy Reid. You know I, I did 23 and me, okay? And I had 8% Nigerian, so fuck the white team. I'm going over to Schmitty's team. Yeah! They're going to put me on the graphic. I'm going to Schmitty's team. Yeah, put me on this motherfucker. Mike McDaniel's white ass is on there. You can take me. I got 23 and me, 8% Nigerian. Hey, Mike McDaniel's. Yeah, yeah, we got Matt, baby. We yeah. got Matt, baby. That's right, baby. Come, Come to the black delegation, man. Come to the delegation. How you got Mike McDaniel? He's a brother. Look it up. He ain't no brother. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he 8%. is. He's an eight percenter like me. I got a cousin that's real light skin. His daddy black. My uncle. They they they, 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 they super light skin. <laughs> Trust How me. The fuck? Hey, Big Smitty, is that you or Tomlin? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> we all looking like, don't we, Jamie? We all looking like. So, hold on, my lineup is crazy, man. I got, yeah, I got really? Mahomes starting at quarterback, of course. <laughs> Mahomes is right. I got Jonathan Taylor, healthy Jonathan Taylor at running back. We got, wide rec- we got the list or no? I got it on my phone. The wide receivers are crazy. How about uh, how about Amon Ross St. Brown and his brother? Their mom's white. She's German shit. Nah, she's they brothers. They brothers. German white. They brothers, man. They brothers. Like, what the white German mom? She, she's still black? You gotta ask yourself this, and this shit's kind of, it's just being real. If they got pulled over by the cops, what are right. they gonna think? That's not fair. I'm just saying that's that's how you gotta play it. Play <laughs> right. brothers. Okay. So that's the that's the determiner. If you get pulled over by the cops, that's where you decide if you're a white or a black guy. <laughs> what are the fans gonna say when they pull you over? Oh, okay. So I can okay. So I I I I have a 96 Impala SS bitch. Woo! Real clean. Every time I get pulled over in it, I roll the window down and the cop goes. Oh, I didn't expect to see you. And I'm like, oh, you racist fuck. <laughs> it's happened like five times. I swear to God. All yeah. right. So CMC is the only white running back anyway. So he's going to have to play corner also. Well, well, he can play both ways. I watched him do it in high school out here. He's a bad Fucking player. Travis Hunter. <laughs> he's play both ways. I love how Mendenhall is like, yeah, all the white guys suck except for that one running back white guy. He's pretty fucking good. 
He's not. The he's backup more running back is Juchek. The backup running back is going to be uh, Usage. What's okay. the name? You check. You check. Be, you you check. check. He'll be the backup. He'll be yeah. the backup. He'll full back. All right. Uh, no matter. He's the backup, Smitty. Just stay to your lane. Yeah. We, got right. a, we got a white full back. Receiver. He's, he just scored up the other day. I know. Wide receivers. We got Cooper Cup, Adam Thielen, Nakua is ours. And no. Tight end. Yes, Andrews and Kelsey. I don't like this rule, dog. I don't I'm like not giving y'all Nakua. I can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? What do you mean you can't do I it? I give you Nakua. You don't get the truth. You're not. You don't get the fucking. You don't get chat, the chat. Chat is Puka Nakua white not, or black? You're not allowing it, motherfucker. You got Mike McDaniel. Shut the fuck up. He's literally black though. Like he's well, literally he's black. black. Like his daddy black. Like he's a brother. Mike McDaniel wore some hoop earrings once. I know that motherfucker's black. Motherfucker like, McDaniel's cracker more cracker than my motherfucking pale ass. He's way darker than you. He ain't darker than me. He's not darker than Nakua. And, the cool, that, that, that's what I'm saying. The cool one of us. He's Polly. He's Man, keep going. Nakua is white. Ask him, he'll tell you. Polly's not white. Ask the chat, but keep going. He's white. He's white. All right. He's white. Uh, all right. So, Matt, yes. we just took five linemen plus an Uso. So, we move. I took Lane Johnson. So, we get the Usos? We get, yeah. So, the white, the white guys get the Pollies? Yeah, no. Because- All right, we're back. See, the thing, the problem is TikTok bans me, Smitty. TikTok bans me when all those young kids in there need to hear what I say. Mm. Like, it's, 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 like, do you, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you gotta, you gotta find a way to say it differently, JB, the same message in a different way. I get it, but. Can't do it. Take too long. It takes too much out of me. Just like when you came on Fox that one day, you you were saying JB, you just delivered it differently. No, I just didn't cuss. See, cuss words are trigger words for some reason. Like, I don't understand why cuss words are trigger words. Like, why is a cuss word a trigger word? Cuss words ain't nothing. Cuss words ain't nothing. Y'all say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, right? We grew up with that. So why not? Why is that now such a fucking issue? Cuss words now are bigger than a made-up human teaching a baby in class that it's okay to have a vagina but grow a dick. Like, that's okay because they didn't cuss, Smitty. They said vagina and penis. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. When, when, you, when you were growing up, it's like a 13-year-old. Could you say "fuck you, dad" and be no. okay with it? Why not? I, I why not? My, I would get my fucking mouth slapped by exactly. my exactly because because curse words. Yeah, we can use them. We use them to enhance what we're trying to say, but there is a a, a certain level of uh, inappropriate use of it sometimes. Like if if I'm around my grandmother, I, I'm personally I'm not cursing out of respect. So curse cursing isn't the end of the world, but like let's not act like it's um something that you like. I can't go to Fox and just be in there cussing all day. Now we cuss it at work, don't get me wrong, but not to like that extent. Like there's a certain level of it. You go on TikTok, JB, you be out here really cussing these kids out. But but the problem is the ones that it hits, they're like, fuck, thanks a lot, coach. The ones that it don't hit are the ones in defense mode. Of the cuss word. Oh, JB cuss. I could never let him coach my my son. He cuss. <laughs> really? But you can sit here and tell your son in class, though, that we're going to tell him and teach him the wrong history lesson. <laughs> Let's keep it 100. We're going to teach him the wrong gender ideology. We're going to teach him the wrong fucking politics. But it's okay. <laughs> ah, you <laughs> right. They hear, they don't listen. I think life, I think we're all a living, a living contradiction. I think we all are as humans, as Americans, everybody around the world. We preach one thing, but then do something else, complete opposite of what we're preaching. But I think that just think that's life. So you're right. It's like you can't on one end say don't curse because it's inappropriate. 
but then go over here and teach something else that's inappropriate. <laughs> like, hold on. Like, if you're going to do it, be consistent. It's like me. It's like, I'm a Christian man. But do I sin? Yes, I do. I so do. What, so why? <clears throat> so why then? If you What you just said. What you just said. Why is what I say an issue? Well, they own TikTok. I only believe what I say, right? I say what I believe, right? Right. So why is it such an issue? Because they own the platform, and whatever they deem as an issue is what they deem. If me and you create our own app, our own issue, our own thing, we can we can see that's make it how I, we want to make it. That's where I disagree. They don't own shit. They own the people because the people allow them to be owned. Mm. If everybody on TikTok said, if you ban me one, to, one more time, we're getting off your platform. They would have zero platforms, Smitty. They would make zero money and they would have zero control. If the people spoke up and said, this is what we're going to allow and right. we're going to do what we do. Then guess what? That's what the fuck would happen. That, if that's with anything. Up, if we come together, that's what that's with anything in life. If, if people, I mean, people don't come together though, because, because we're scared to tell the truth, Smitty. That's what I, I'm just been telling you for the last thirty minutes. Not you, but everybody. Like we're scared to tell the truth, and then and the truth will set you free. They've been saying that in the Bible for fucking. If you're such a Christian and Bible believer, if the truth will set you free, then why are you so scared of the truth? Who's going to be the leader that puts bring all y'all together, though, JB? Are you going to be that guy that brings money together and say, hey, everybody who wants to be real and who, who's tired of getting banned for cussing or showing your titty or, or doing whatever, let's all come together Eddie, let's and let's go against them. They're doing porn on Twitter. Well, Twitter, you can do whatever on Twitter. There's but no uh, hold on, though. Why? Because Elon don't care. Because the people spoke. Not because Elon they, don't Elon don't care. You can do whatever you want to on Twitter. Elon took over. He don't care. Platform that the people spoke about. If they did it on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, it would be the same way. But people won't fucking talk. But I, my point of this whole thing is though, I can get banned or get get a strike or some shit for something that's very minute in the thick of things. When we got girls on straight doing porn on there, men and women, whatever, doing porn on there. That's not just say women, men too. You got porn on there. Not on TikTok. No, I'm talking about on, on what's called. But on TikTok, I get people sending me videos all the time, not only on YouTube, on TikTok, or everything owned by Google. So there's girls pulling their pants down because they have a tattoo on their ass. It doesn't really just show ass. Like, I guess their crack's covered because of a tattoo. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, that's what the fucking, that's the algorithm breaker. <laughs> like, I'm going to show my ass naked on TikTok. On TikTok, homie, on YouTube. But I'll get fucking a strike or ban off TikTok for cussing? Because there's no. Because I think, again, there's ways... This AI stuff is it's a it's a it's a robot basically, again, and again. it's not it's not human. So there's certain again. things where they're programmed. If you hear if you hear this word, this word, this word, this word, ban them. Where with the pictures and because because it's not a human, it's, it's a robot. It's AI. It's artificial intelligence. There's ways to trick it. On Instagram, for example, you'll see girls wearing a see-through shirt where you can clearly see their nipple, everything, but technically speaking, they have a shirt on, so they let it they let it go. Where if they took the shirt off, it would be an issue, obviously, to just show bare breasts on the, 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 the damn feed. So there's ways to get around it. I got, I get sent TikTok videos all the time of made-up humans luring our babies into a million different crazy satanic ritual shit about fucking this is who you are, this is why you are. Like what? And TikTok's mm. fine with it. Like you can just give our babies the fucking craziest shit. But if you say fuck, you're gonna get banned. It's just it, 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 at the end of the day, it doesn't matter about AI. It doesn't matter. About, it's about what you allow and control on your platform. Twitter figured it out. They figured out the AI fucking deal. So what? And this is a guy who wanted to start AI. Fucking that owns Twitter. Well, Look, Twitter, Twitter's no rules though. Twitter, like, it's good and bad. New. It's it's you do it's, it's do whatever you want to do. But it's, that's all it's new. It's bad. It's, it's good. It's AI. it's everything on there. It's still controlled by AI though. Elon Musk is one of the founders of AI. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, why can't he do it and the TikTok can't? 
Why can they figure out how to manage AI, but no one else can? It's all lies. What you it's mean, though? I don't understand what you're saying. Like, how, how is Twitter, Twitter figuring out how, how to manage Twitter it? Twitter uses AI, too. Right, of course. They all use okay. it, of course. So in their algorithm, the way they've set it up is basically all can go, whatever, except for certain things, right? TikTok nah, is everything. using AI, too. Well, they, they don't want everything to go because I think their they're target, my point? T- TikTok's target market is these kids. So for, for, for okay, so for yeah. them, if, if my market is is kids, I'm I don't I'm not going to want to have certain things on my platform. I'm not going to want to have cursing and name calling and book because what's the big thing with with this generation? Oh, they cyber bullied me. So any type of language that's that's tailored towards bullying, bullying, you're calling out somebody, calling them a it's nobody, saying true, it's kind of third. It's not true. That's though. naturally going to be removed. When I'm it's saying. not true though, because you you're sitting there fucking. Teaching my young kids that it's okay to be a boy and be and, and change to a woman. It's okay to teach the wrong shit in, uh, to our kids. That is what your fucking platform is for? Hell nah. You can't sit here and tell me that that's what it's for when we're sitting here telling guys like JB not cuss at my kids when we're teaching our kids that it's okay to cut off. Well, the kids. problem is there are people that unfortunately believe that that's honestly okay in that's this what world. i'm saying so, so not- to them they're not doing anything wrong by allowing them to teach that unfortunately that's what it is i'm with you i'm just saying that's what that, that, that's the line of demarcation anyways because people universally feel like okay you should, cursing is inappropriate in certain settings that's a universal thing for whatever reason but we got about three minutes before jeff pops on yeah uh, matt, matt apparently couldn't make it um damn jeff, man. jeff popped on uh, Jeff's going to pop on real quick for a few minutes because he has to go do another show. We need gonna picks. Talk about, we'll talk Natty for tonight's game. Uh, we got a lot to still talk about. We got the Deion Sanders Colorado we show. We got a lot to talk about, yeah. I wanted to bring up a Matt, um, but he couldn't make it. Uh, before We got three minutes. John Calipari is leaving Kentucky for Arkansas. Um, has to be major news. I started seeing it by some people I trusted yesterday, and I showed it to you guys, and everyone, you guys, and even Weddle, and then were like, no way, that's fake, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, my boy who sent it to me, I don't think it was fake. Here's what I've heard from some inside sources, especially, you know, I we have a couple guys on this show that are in NCAA head coaches. So I've talked to some of those. Just let everyone understand who we have on this show, men's and women's side of things as far as college basketball. And I'll give you some takes that I won't say who said it, but I'll give you some takes. Jerry Jones involved. A, Arkansas alum, big money guy. Walmart's involved. B, that's where they're from. Uh, Bentonville, Arkansas, not too far away. C, Tyson Foods is involved. Also, one of the biggest food companies in the world who uses a lot of crazy shit anyway there was one in garden city kansas now there's one in in right there in arkansas university of arkansas's back door these are three billion dollar industry owned company people Mm. jerry jones worth about whatever 10 billion you got tyson foods billions walmart billions all involved so you can take that for a grain of salt. You can take it for what you want. I don't believe anyone's going to bring that up on mainstream media yet, but I'm letting you know first, those are the three enticers that got him to leave because he just left. Not only the same conference, Smitty, the same division. <laughs> you are in the same division. That is a shit sandwich you just gave Kentucky. I'm going to go to Arkansas who has had a good coach, Musselman, just left for USC, which proves my point before when I said the head coach at USC left for SMU. You don't go from L.A. to, uh, no offense, to SMU if it's not a problem. And you you definitely go from Arkansas to USC to get out of Arkansas to L.A. So make it make sense. Let me let me go back and rewind to what I said about that last week. Now, Musselman leaves Arkansas, goes to USC because why? It's L.A. Number one. Number two, you don't go from Kentucky to Arkansas when we're talking about football. You just, I, I, I'm sorry, basketball. Basketball, yeah. You do it for football, but you don't do it for basketball. Let's just keep it real. 
Football, maybe, Smitty. Basketball, what? Arkansas ain't been good since Nolan Richardson and Thurman and Corliss Williamson lost to UCLA, my Bruins. They ain't been good since. So why would you go from Kentucky, the team that puts out more NBA talent than anybody, to Arkansas? Well, you do a deep dive, there's a clear and plain disagreement with the head coach and the AD at Kentucky. Call Perry and the AD haven't got along for years from what I've heard, number one. Number mm. two, maybe he's at the point to say, listen, I don't want to go out like a sucker and everyone calling me a recruiter only and a shitty coach. I'm going to go to Arkansas with billions of dollars backers, and I'm going to go build a culture, and I'm going to start something up my way fresh, and I'm not going to just bring in one and done. I'm going to come try to bring a culture in. I'm going to still bring the best players that I could bring, but now I'm going to create a new culture with a new fresh start. That's the only thing I can think of, Smitty. But what, and I'm going to let you go, but here's my thing. To whatever happens tonight, Smitty, when this deal gets done, apparently it's a five-year deal to go to Arkansas. Here's what I'm going to go out on a limb and say. If Kentucky's AD and president aren't on a G4 right now mm. to the national title game and hand Hurley a blank check to mm. become the head coach of Kentucky, I'd be shocked. And whatever this blow does, this spiral of this wave that's going to hit college basketball tonight after this national title game, is going to be a historic one because Calipari leaving Kentucky is going to make this landscape become what I've been telling y'all it is, and it's the most watered-down product we've ever seen, and you're going to see now a huge, huge climate shift in college basketball, and I think Hurley is going to definitely listen to Kentucky? Only trails UCLA in national championships? The blue blood of blue bloods? I, there's no way you can't listen, number one. Number two, who goes to UConn? Who goes to Purdue? Does Purdue's coach go to UConn? There's going to be a shitload of things that happen tonight, and I'm just making that prediction right now. So, Smitty, go ahead. What's your take on this? Real quick, because I know we got a very special guest we're about to uh, bring in real quick, but... uh. I, listen, I'm with you, man. At first, I was just when you sent the link over. I'm like, what? This makes no sense. Why would you go from the same, stay in the same division, go from a, a, a powerhouse in Kentucky to a, a lesser school? And but now, what I'm hearing right now, and shout out to our producer Bailey in the background, is that allegedly Calipari will be getting around probably six million for NIL at Arkansas, which is on definitely on the higher end when you compare it to other universities and what other college basketball coaches are getting. So that's one that's one benefit. I'm seeing from a salary standpoint, it's gonna be very comparable to what he was already getting at Kentucky as well. So my only thing is that I could, that makes sense to me is what you said, JB. He's trying to uh be, continue to build his legacy. He's been in Kentucky since I think 09, if I'm not mistaken. You know, uh, he's he's been to multiple Final Fours. I think 12 out of 15 seasons he, he was there. He, he's made it to the tournament. Was only he's only won one Natty. So he's he's had top recruiting class out of top recruiting class, but only got one national national title. So a lot of people look at him as a as kind of a, a letdown because he hasn't really done enough. So maybe this is his way to prove that he still has it and be able to get a bigger NIO deal, get from underneath that AD that he's not getting along with the Kentucky and kind of rebuild the legacy, so to speak, moving forward. So. Jeff, how you doing, Jeff? I appreciate you jumping on early. I know you got to go to BetUS. Um, everyone wants Big Jeff on because he is a great betting extraordinaire. Uh, make sure you go follow all our bets on Winnable. You'll get some of Jeff's picks as well uh, all week long. Jeff, uh, how you doing, brother? I appreciate you hopping in here. Um, real quick, what's your take on this Patino thing that seems to be happening in front of our very eyes? We don't know what's going on, but what – what would you what would you feel like if you're muscle man and you see that he's gonna get six million and you just left for SC because they wouldn't pay you? Calipari, Calipari, not Patino, Calipari. Yeah, I don't think Patino Patino ain't going to Kentucky. Uh, All right, no, I mean, I meant Calipari. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, sure. Uh, look, I'm blown away that uh, people feel that this guy's worth six, eight million dollars. I've said before, the guy can't coach. He just can't. Let me pause. Let me pause. <laughs> 
Let me pause you real quick, as Smitty would say. Let me pause you real quick. <laughs> I, I know why they pay him this money, because at the end of the day, retrospectively speaking, right. you bring in a bunch of NBA talent and you go and they go right. on to the NBA, your, your, your brand becomes a brand, and that's why Kentucky's become so iconic because of the Anthony Davises, the Bookers, the John Walls. So that's why I think. Go ahead. Sorry. No, sure. You're 100% right. And and we, we've seen that at other schools, too. You know, Penny Hardaway is a horrible coach, but he gets number one type kids to go there. And for a lot of people, that's what it's about. And you're right. It's going to help a lot. But you know what also helps considerably with your program is going to the Final Four, going to the Elite mm-hmm. Eight, going deep into the tournament. Winning. Um, You know, th- this Kentucky job is so interesting because I think the, the top choice has to be Danny Hurley. Now, obviously, you're not going to make – uh, a move to Danny until after tonight's over. I would think he would be the guy. I think if it's not him, it would be Nate Oates, which, you know, that would be really interesting too. We, we forget, all right, these are all major rivals, right? Arkansas, Kentucky, you know, Alabama and Kentucky, as you alluded to, it is going to be a big shift as far as the climate in college basketball. And then, again, all these other jobs are going to open up, right? So, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a wild it's, thing. Yeah. It's not only the SEC, and I can see if you're, you know, you're Kentucky, and and, and then let's, I could see, you know, a, a team that's not in your division. They're in your division, meaning you're playing them twice a year, and then a third time in the SEC title game, possibly. They are a in division school, not only just conference. They're in your division. This is telling you how bad college sports have become, and that's why I say college sports is over as we know it, because end of the day. You never would see this in the in the world. You would never see this. The, the teams wouldn't even allow. The presidents wouldn't even go for it nowadays. Like, oh yeah, come on over, play me. Uh, January sixth, I believe they play each other first. <laughs> I think to look in the, the end. If it's not Danny Hurley, uh, I think it's. I would probably look at Scott Drew at Baylor. He's a guy that I think Mark Few. I think he his name could be involved here. And don't think they're not going to call Billy Donovan as well. Billy Donovan's mm. a guy I think that we could see make a, a shift back to, to college basketball again. I mean, we have to remember he was an elite coach at Florida. Uh, he's an elite college coach. He'd be a guy I'd look at as well. Now, I I, I know friends of mine who, who, who have told me that these are NBA players that I know that have told me that Donovan will never coach at college again. He has no interest because of what's happened and transpired. He does not want to deal with the, the the current landscape. Or he said he would have never left college. He saw the writing on the wall, and so has Coach K. And I'm, Coach K may be one of the smarter ones, uh, other than Billy Donovan, to get out when he got out because he saw the writing on the wall. Um, just like Saban, just like Chip Kelly, just like these other guys, they don't want to do it no more. They don't want to be the head coach uh, and deal with all this shit. Hurley. You know, 51 years old, he's a family blood blood heirloom. I mean, his family goes deep. His daddy, we played him in high school, St. Joseph's. Uh, and plus, we played DeMatha, those two powerhouses on the East Coast. We would play uh, here on the West Coast. His dad's been known since I was in high school. Both sons, one's at Arizona State now, hasn't had the same success, but did well at Buffalo, got the Arizona State job. We'll see what he ends up doing. But obviously, Danny is the one um, that – is everyone's going to come after. But I would not be shocked if Kentucky comes with a blank check tonight. I would be at the game and say, here, what what do you want? Because this is what it's become. It's NIL deal. We're going to pay the players the same thing. Why why wouldn't we go after the coach that is is one back-to-back national titles if that's what they end up doing? Even if they lose tonight, which I don't see happening, I they still will. see them giving him whatever he wants. He would be the first choice to me. Um, again, though, they have the pick of the litter. They're Kentucky. They are the biggest uh, name, essentially, in college basketball. They have whatever they want, and they're going to be able to choose whoever they want. Uh, I'm surprised they hadn't did this for earlier. Uh, Calipari has been a mess for a few years. He gets a new start somewhere else. Again, very surprised that it's Arkansas, but that's going to be a great game, you know, in, in January or whatever, as you said. Yeah, did you hear why? Did you hear why my 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 sources told me and why he's going to Arkansas? Did no. you hear me start off the show with that? I mm-hmm. didn't hear it, no. So Jerry Jones is apparently involved in giving a lot of money uh, to get him. Uh, Arkansas alum, billionaire. Uh, Tyson Foods, one of the biggest food uh, manufacturing companies in the world, is right there. And then Walmart, Bentonville, Arkansas plant, home of our Walmart. All three of it are in, in are involved in giving basically unlimited resources. NIL money will be unlimited. 
Those are three billion dollar entities. And now you have unlimited resources that no one can match in the country. I would I would say I would venture to say nobody can match those three um, uh, those three wallets. So that is one huge enticing. We have to remember a lot of big boosters in that area. I mean, the Walmart family that the what are they? The um, what's the Waltons? Waltons. All three are worth billions. They're literally one of the, billion billion. Billion. the big, richest families on the planet. You know? Yeah, all three. I think all three of them are worth sixty billion a piece. Just imagine what the dad was worth before he died. <laughs> I got to tell you, I've said before. I think um, that's a sneaky great place to coach man that that's an elite uh university as far as fan base it's just uh they got a bunch of money in arkansas there that's all there is there uh right you know it, it's sec it's the highest level college basketball i never it's, knew that i never knew arkansas was like a money place that's correct i never thought it's about money that. it's oh, money Smitty, but it's, it's just kind of in a shithole it's like muscle men don't go from arkansas to usc for no reason and, right. and that's why i told you last week SC's coach don't go to SMU for a reason. They go to LA for fucking SMU just because of shits and giggles. It's not an uprise. It's a fucking get away from Bronny James, get away from his daddy and all this Hollywood shit, and you go to SMU where nobody's really going to know me. Keep like, in mind, Musselman also is a guy who um, – he's kind of a mini Calipari. He's a guy who gets a bunch of kids to come there. He's a good guy mm-hmm. as far as, you know – transfer stuff he gets a lot of those kind of kids and you know he has new teams every year it's hard to 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 field teams and put them together and get them all to work cohesively but um i think everybody's going to be happy in the end and look at muscle and he gets to go to you know southern california better quality of life as far as the weather that sort of thing um so i think everybody will make out in the end yeah i agree um all right let's talk tonight jeff um what would shock you uh just if a question i want to ask you for all these pickers out here these betters and everything that what want to shock pick. me um what would shock me is if purdue wins i i would be shocked i, I think i think uconn is a significantly better team than everyone else that said yeah, Jeff, don't tell me that, Jeff. i think purdue's getting too many points here that said i'm also not going to bet against uconn because i thought alabama might be getting too many points and uconn covered uconn just wins every game by double digits right i had this number more at like four four and a half it's six and a half seven here's the thing it, Klingon's very important here Klingon needs to stay in the game for a good amount of the first half if he's on the bench Edie and the boys could really pull the lead out here's the difference in the game though the, the guards are the difference the guards UConn's guards are just way better than Purdue's. I'm not a Braden Smith guy. Never have been. Never will be. Um, I think that Castle and, and Caravan and, and and Newton and all those guys they're just better than what Purdue has. Um, Purdue's guards didn't look too bad uh, last game, though. I thought they still. I thought Braden bit. Smith was shockingly bad against. He was horrific against. NC his- State's guards clearly outplayed Purdue the first half. It wasn't even close. And NC State, that's why they were in the game. I was. I, I will say I was really surprised at how – I mean, NC State couldn't hit water in a boat. They had one kid that was scoring the entire game, and, you know, at the half, they were right there. Um, now, look, Edie's going to get calls. That's just how it goes. He's more likely to remain in this game. I think, to me, though, you kind of kind of wash out the centers. They kind of cancel each other out. It's all going to be about who stands and is on uh, the floor more. But Klingon, remember – he hasn't faced a lot of post-up opportunities. There's not a lot of guys like Edie in, in the country. That's going to be a great matchup. But, again, the guard plays just to me better on UConn. I would be shocked if if Purdue wins. I don't think they can't not win. Um, I just think it's a tall order to beat UConn. They can come at you so fast, so many uh, different ways. And they just always get that run, that 8 10 nothing run that just you can't recover. Are you not concerned that Edie, Edie can get clinging in early foul trouble, though? Sure. That's I think- the concern. Right, but I also wouldn't be surprised. Again, Klingon's really good, too, and he could yeah. get Edie in foul trouble. Um, the, the the thought, though, is that's not going to happen because Edie and Purdue generally get the calls over whoever else they play. I just – I think UConn's a better overall team. I think the numbers yeah. probably a little high, but do I think they can actually win Purdue? No. You like the over or under or the under of 145 and a half? I like the – I prefer the over here. I think both offenses can operate. Um, I think the, the big key is going to be Edie and, and Klingon, right? I, if, as Smitty said, if Klingon's off the off the court, Edie's going to score. 
I think Purdue can also find past offense if they can hit mid-range jumpers. The major important part of this game is Braden Smith. He was terrible the other night. He has to get 15 or more points to me in this game. He's going to have a mid-range opportunity on offense. We'll see if he can make them. Again, I just go with the guards that, that UConn have. I think clinging under points is a decent shout as well here. We've seen him play teams with decent bigs, and he hasn't been that effective. I look at a game like Creighton. I think he failed to get to 10 points in both those games this year. They have a good big. Um, this is the best big you're going to face. Edie is the top level. Hey, I've talked to two Division One basketball coaches and friends of mine. One of them's on this show a lot. I, I asked them, I said, is there any – Is there, am I crazy to, to think what I think um, and saying that if UConn came out to run and gun by bringing the other seven footer in who can jump out the gym, the skinny kid, the black kid, the skinny, whatever, what's his Samson name? Johnson. If those two were on the court at the same time and they were like, dude, I'd actually, I'd actually think it's going to happen because those two running and gunning with two athletic bigs, giving Edie who's slow and methodical, giving him an, you know, to have to think, Right. I want to know what you think about that take. Well, I think um, I think shout to Max, shout out to Max real quick though. He just said it's ninety nine ninety nine. He had a five thousand dollar prop bet on UConn game, and he promised that he would look out for it. So he sent us ninety nine a hundred dollars, Maxi man. Shout out to you, appreciate you, man. Thank you, and Max. Shout out to Jeff Shirt as well. Shout out to Max. Um, so yeah, I, I I saw something I noticed in the game against NC State, and a lot of people saw it too. We all know Edie is very slow, right? He takes a whole lot of time to get going in his moves and everything. UConn, or not UConn, NC State kind of pestered him, kind of mm -hmm. on the perimeter, yeah. where a guard was coming in, slapping the ball out. And he's that, that's something that UConn, I think, should do. You kind of kind of front him and then have yeah. someone that can kind of pull up. Look, if you pull off and try to double him, you know, they have kids that can hit shots on the outside. They're going to get plenty of opportunities. I mentioned the mid-range for Purdue is going to be very important. But, yeah, that's an interesting thought. I, I'm sure Hurley will throw it all out or throw the kitchen sink at, at Edie and see if someone else can beat them. Le Again. Le uh, Lance Jones was the guard. I couldn't think of his name. Yeah. Lance Jones played pretty well last he's week. He's a, a great guy. defender, man. Yeah. He, he's really important. Uh, he's transferred for them out of Southern Illinois. Him and Fletcher Lawyer are, are the are, are really important. They've got to play well in this game because again, I've talked about it. Uh, the guards for UConn are so superior. Yeah, man. yeah. Um, I think Edie's gonna have a big. Like, I think Edie knows he has to have a big game. So I, I think he like like this is what they've been waiting for. The Purdue has you know hasn't been to this game what since when? When was the last time Purdue been to the, been to the Natty? Was it sixty nine uh, or something? It was a long, a long time ago, time. a long time, and they they let let us down the last few years. You know what, Smitty? Edie, Edie knows this is it. You know what? Too no what? one's giving a fuck either since then. Nobody cares about Purdue. <laughs> so like, I just think Edie gonna go out here and drop thirty five and seventeen with four wow. blocks. Well, then you should probably look towards his point total. Um, you know, he's I think it's around twenty four. I mean, he has to have a big game for Purdue to win. So if if you think Purdue can hang. It's going to go through him. Um, that said, um, I played yesterday. I thought Southern uh, South Carolina was going to beat Iowa. I, I didn't really have to believe they could beat uh, South Carolina. I played the money line parlay. I took South Carolina money line and UConn money line here today. So all I need UConn to do is win. Um, Did you bet the I, ladies last night? What's that? Did you bet the ladies? Yeah, I had South. I took the South Carolina money line. I I didn't think the Iowa could beat them. Yeah, um, especially when they have men playing against them, as, as Don Saley wants. I got to I got Purdue winning tonight, man. So me and you got to kind of got to go against each well, other. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I've had money I don't think it'd be weeks. impossible. I'd be surprised, but I, hey, Edie's that good. So. Five hundred bones. I got five hundred bones. are sitting there for me. Hey, Jeff. As soon as this uh, season's yeah. over tonight, are you going to dive into NBA or no? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I I've been NBA kind of on a personal level. I mean, I I'm. For me, it's hard to come on shows like this and talk about the NBA because I don't really look at players and I don't care about any of that stuff. I just look at the number. You know, the number is the most important thing to me. I don't even know who's playing on these teams half the time. To me, again, the number tells you all you need to know about these games. Professional sports, it's all about the number. It's not about – I don't care who's playing, to be honest. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because no games tonight, obviously, in the NBA because uh, of the Natty. Tomorrow, the NBA is back on. Lakers-Warriors. Lakers dropped one last night um, without LeBron. They lost. 
Usually it's the other way around. Um, they lost last night, which put them back in the ninth spot. They were in, they jumped the Kings, um, and then they 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 lose it. They got to play the 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 Warriors tomorrow, which is pretty much I think was it three games left, Smitty, or two? It's uh, but it's like three, yeah. Where that game tomorrow seems like it's going to be the, the either moves up or they're going to play each other again in the play in this 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 everyone gets a, a trophy play in uh, tournament. It's not uh, everybody get a trophy. This is actually really good. Like it's been really good for the league. Honestly, it's like an additional playoff game. Yeah. Winner go home. Like it's, it's, well, you know, <laughs> I, we're, we're talking a lot about tomorrow and the rest of the week. I mean, according to a lot of people, we're not even going to be here tomorrow due to this eclipse that's going to happen. So yeah, I know it happened in South America already, and they're still live. So I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. Are we going to get purged by all the Hamases, or what's going on? Yeah, I don't know, guys. I I may have never seen you guys again. So hey, thanks for having me on the show and. uh Shout out to all your friends in the chat. Uh, see you on the other side, I guess. Hey, that, Jeff, are, are we even going to have a natty tonight? Good point. Is that is that what people are saying? They're saying this, this they, is it? They say this. Everybody, every, they say this every, the world's going to end every year. They always say this. TikTok. I went to church last night. The eclipse night. is just going to stay over the sun forever. And <laughs> all plant life, all everything's going to die. I got to tell you, though, and I, I know you guys are familiar with this on the West Coast, but. I was in my bed drinking some coffee when that earthquake happened. The earthquake is a crazy thing, man. Like, I couldn't imagine a real earthquake. JB, these these East Coasters had a little minor little 4.8. No, it's not that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, it's an earthquake is a wild thing. Like, uh, Jeff. Just, just the irony from Smitty, the East Coaster. This one's like from we, Indiana. We get seven point twos here, like it's a thing. No, to do. I'm just saying it's not. I, I obviously it wasn't a big one. I that's I why. You, that, yeah, that's why I prefaced this with. I know you guys are used to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so you felt it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I. I, I saw Molly Quorum. I saw some social media post that live. she was live on ESPN, and yeah. apparently it hit or something. Well, yeah, the thing yeah. is. I was in a house and there was I didn't I didn't have anything on so like it shook my doors and window. It's just a wild thing, right? Yeah. Like it's scary. I'm not gonna lie. We're not used to that, right? It's yeah. just like for you guys, if it would snow, it's like you're not used to it. Like, like I, to snow, but. who do you blame? Like Biden or P Diddy? <laughs> I I love seeing stuff like that. Like uh, it was because you know, like you hear, see the eclipse is happening. There was an uh, earthquake on Friday. The world's going to end. I told you. Hey, are you going to go out? Are you going to get the glasses? No, I won't even remember. I'm not going to get the glasses because I don't know if one of these fucking illegals are going to run up on me. So I'm going to just be sitting out there with the strap just in case. <laughs> JB, I'm telling you, we had we had an, an eclipse in November. I'm telling you, I don't know if it was a... No, yes, we did. We yeah, it. This we is like it. a real, like... No, we. I swear to God, because I had they had the glasses not, in November. Not a full eclipse, Mitty. I say it was a full. We had some. I don't know all the different eclipses. We had. A, we, we had some. We had. You're not going to see it. We had. We had some type of eclipse. I'm not on the. We're not on the. Like it. It goes through like. Um, I'm telling you. Nowhere near where I'm at. Well, we're we're all going to see it, but it's not going to be as big as the Midwest. Yeah, it's be like a Indianapolis, Kansas, all the way to Florida. Yeah. Right. My right. sister has no school because they're ha- they're having a total eclipse. It's going to be pitch black, dark in Indianapolis. Is what they're saying. So there's well, no school. Well, I don't understand why are people not why are kids not going to school. I don't understand. I guess it's like a legendary thing. Is they, they they want people to witness this shit. I guess I don't know. No, because they're scared of of, of whatever they saying is happening. The purge. I don't know if it's the Jeff, purge. That happens all, all the time. It's- Jeff, I'm a Jeff. I'm a I'm a real one. So I'm gonna act. So I'm a, I'm gonna admit this. So before the show, I asked uh, Bailey and uh, JB. I said I said this is a stupid question. I'm I'm admitting this. I said, but I said, is the eclipse happening everywhere? <laughs> JB said, well, if the moon covers the sun, then that's usually. But what I meant by that is like I've been hearing it like more so uh, be popularized in in the Midwest and the East Coast. And less about like out here, so I was like, maybe it's just because we're we're, we're positioned, we're not getting the same exact. So you're not. You're only effect. gonna see like a real like partial one. Okay, so me, I'm not different. in the I'm not in the, the the area either. But I knew do know at like two o'clock I saw that there's. Hey, a- don't look up at it though. What's gonna happen? You go blind. I think. You get fucked up. Your eyes will be fucked. That's, that's why you have why to they, That's why they make it clear. You go, and I think that's why they have like. The national, it's just to make sure people are all right. Like, bro, you, look at it, you could go and now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plead my ignorance here. So, we, I can look up at the sun when it's brightest, but when it's covered, it'll fuck me up. 
Yeah, I don't get that either. Yeah, that don't. That, that's why I was about to ask you. That don't make no sense to me. I'm looking at it tonight, Smitty. Fuck it. If I go blind, fuck it. I want to see it. what the fuck. I want to tell the truth tomorrow on the show. If I'm blind, so be it. Or if we're even here, so we'll this, see. This is um. I will say this before I go. You guys ever think about like I I think about this all the time like space like how truly like big space is. Well, yeah, it's it, it's it's like infinite. I, it's infinite. Like you can't it's even like think hard about to it. even understand like how yeah, you, can't. you can't understand it and like how long we th- this planet's been here and planets before it and then all, how long after like it's we're, you can't and we all, it. we're only here for like eighty years. Jeff, I'm glad we're having this conversation because like my mind, I think about weird stuff every single day and I, and I I don't voice it because I think I'm the only person on Earth who thinks about random stuff. But no like something like like we're just here like like we're on a fucking big ass rock. And but we're also, just like, floating in the middle of nowhere. That's what we, I'm saying. Like, we don't know anything about. Are we though? Are we though? Well, I'm just saying, like, we, as far as we know. But let me ask you also this: when you, when we die, how do we not know what happens yet? We can do all this shit, but we don't know. Like, what happens? Because I've been watching. I've been telling you guys. I've been watching a lot of videos from like people that like. They again. They read the Bible and like our religion. Talk, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to like me. They talk about what heaven's like. Like what what you know what you're yeah. gonna see. And it it is giving me peace a lot of the time. With like, I hope it's like that. You know. Yeah. But they also talk about what hell's like and and. But how do we not know? Like how Jeff, do we not know? I, I just feel like Jeff. In the, I know it's not a religion show. Listen. I just feel like everyone should believe in something. I'm not saying everybody should be Christian. I'm not saying everybody. It's not even religious though. We all are gonna die, right? right? And Jeff, it doesn't make sense in my brain that whatever you believe in, that that entity brought us here for a short amount of time, we die, and that's it. Like that, that just makes zero sense to me. So whatever you, I don't care if it's Buddha, Muslim, I'm not a judge. Whatever you believe, to me, you gotta believe in something. You cannot tell me this Big Bang just some shit blew it together agree. and we just reformed and we just that only makes sense. It's the reason we here, Jeff. Is a reason we here right now. I just find it fa- sad that like there are people that don't believe in anything. Like don't believe in like, nothing though. Like just nothing. Like like, like we're, we're just here and it's just that don't, doesn't make sense. That well, that to, to me is I, crazier than believing in what in, in God to me. I hate to throw this out and just run, but I gotta go and do a Kyle Troop show, guys. You guys think about that? Maybe toss it around. <laughs> hey, say Jeff. I'll see you Friday. I appreciate it. Okay, I'll be back. See you guys. All right, later, All right, man. Shout out to Jeff. Here's what I'm glad to hear. I'm not the only person who thinks about random weird stuff every single day. I'm oh, so I know glad. You. Some weird shit every day. Huh. Uh, here's what I I, I want to. If there's dogs and cats and and whales, yeah, there's got to be something else in the world. In the world, or are we the world? Or are we just Earth? We're the world, right? JB, there were dinosaurs. We know that for a fact. We have actual. Think but, about that. But. There's not any mention of dinosaurs in the Bible. Let me Google it real quick because I ain't gonna lie, I ain't read the whole Bible. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've done research. There's no mention of dinosaurs in the Bible. Why is that? See, that's why you then that's when you get into the whole Scientology versus that's when you get into single cell organism debate. Why no single cell organism can live past a hundred and whatever nine years or whatever it is. Listen. Ooh. So is the Bible fake? See, it, it, this how things get deep because, like, even Christians, <laughs> even Christians, they're like, they're like, okay, where they're all, where they're, where hey, they're Eric, I'm to the Bible. Motherfucker, I'm sorry that you guys can't handle my fucking hood mentality. That's smarter than most. <laughs> JB, it gets scary though, because, like, to me, I'm you gotta believe in something. And I, I can't tell you for certain that every single thing in the Bible is just 100% true. But I do know there's a lot of teachings in that Bible that I've lived by, that I've seen in my real life. Could that be coincidence? Maybe so. I don't know. But it's like you got to believe in something just to keep yourself motivated to live this life the right way. Because if you're just going around life with just you ain't about to do shit. Just walk around. Here's the here's the bottom line. And, you need and, something. And if anyone doesn't think this way, in my opinion, it's ignorance, and ignorance is life threatening. Whether you say it, say it. 
No, no, no. I'm just trying to think of the. I'm not going to say believe because believe is what you're supposed to have according to the Bible. You have to believe in order to go to the heavens. You can't just say, and they say in the Bible that you can believe and repent the second you die and still go to heaven. The last second on this earth, you can repent and ask for forgiveness, and still, he's a forgiving God, they say, you can go to heaven, right? That's what they say. They, whoever the fuck they are, and whoever they are, and them, and all that. The bottom line is, though, my question to you is, wouldn't you rather believe and it not be there than not believe and it be there? That's why I used to tell my homies. So I had a teammate at a ball. I'm not going to say his name because there's no point to But I had a, a D-line homie, real cool cat, man. Real smart, computer-like, geek-type dude. Um, real big to technology, right? You know, uh, super dope. One of my closest friends during the time. But he was, at the time, he was atheist. And I'm not a guy, again, I don't go around like, oh, you're an atheist, you're going to hell. That's not how I, I lead as a Christian. I try to lead as a Christian by how I live my life as a, That's as, atheist. As a real person. You know what I'm saying? So, right, exactly. He told me that. So, I, like, I don't treat you weird because I try to I try to understand where you're coming from, and I try to kind of explain to you where I'm coming from. And I would always say what you just said, Jay, but I'm like, Jay, but I'm like, listen, you're right. There's no, like, I don't know for a 100% that God is real, 100%. I haven't literally seen him. My faith is strong enough to where I do believe it's 100%, but I haven't actually seen them. But like you said, why not lean on the side of like, you know what, in the event that he is, let me go ahead and just and just praise just in case because the, the, the contrary is death and hell and and, and I, I don't even want to be close to that. Hey, not to be a hypocrite, is it kind of like what I started the show with when I was preaching on here about I'd rather die telling the truth? Is he, are these guys so ignorant where they're, I'd rather die going out like not believing. <laughs> right, right, that's right. Like, me, that's a little different. I don't yeah, know, but yeah. it is what it is. Let's dive into some sports. I got some, uh, I want to dive into this Colorado thing. Uh, I wish Matt was here. God. Um, I want to dive into this Colorado thing. Uh, number one, let's talk about the jewelry that is out there. Let's do that, please. And I know this is great discussion and debate that we won't agree on. Um, you, so basically they're doing the, the diamond test or whatever, uh, on their jewelry context. Everyone knows out there that we were the first program to announce program. what happened when they got robbed at the Rose bowl, UCLA. I had firsthand information. Barstool sports gave us credit. Finally, the reason I had inside information is because my homeboy son was one of them. So anyway, so we we aired that, we shared it, we showed it, we dropped it on this show. Now, having said that, um, we debated then. Start now won't be none. Mm. Uh, now they're flossing it even harder, and they're doing the diamond test bullshit. Um, so I posted a tweet, and I tagged Smitty, and I said, and I smacked, and I tagged Matt. And uh, because I'm ready for it, I'm re I want all the fucking heat. So if it happens again, I said, if you got to read my words, I said, so if it happens, I didn't say when it happens, let's be clear. I said, so if it happens again, there'll be no excuses, right? No defensing, right? You're not going to defend them, right? Smitty, of course. Well, what happens to the cats that, do, that did it? <laughs> Well, they wouldn't do it. See, see, we must be from different hoods. But I want, I want, I want, I want you to go ahead and and give us your take on this shit right here. Listen, BPS, BPS, stereotypical. We're gonna, we're gonna say it's BPS. But I know white boys that used to rock jewelry too. Of course, of course. But y'all, but y'all got it from us though. So listen, I understand that. Oh, then you're even making it worse. That's cool. Like, we, we like jewelry. It's not nothing to hide from. Black people, we like we like jewelry. We like watches. We like chains. That's what we like. You know what I'm saying? We grew up not having shit. So when we get a little money, we like to show it off a little bit. Whether it's right, wrong, or, or indifferent, that, that, that's what it is. Uh, why are you rocking fake shit? Most of it's fake though. My stuff real. I got on my on my neck. Yeah, but don't say you you came up through nothing just so my you stuff. could have nice shit when it's fake shit. It's my not stuff. nice still. <laughs> my stuff real. My stuff real. So anyway. It's still not nice, though. It's fake. <laughs> not your Listen. shit. But I'm saying, 
Don't say we're from the mud and we want nice shit and you're wearing cubic zirconia, homie. You got to fake it till you make it. Fake, fake it till you make it, JB. Faker than, you're, than you are. You're fake. Fake it till you make it. But listen, JB, listen. We understand from the in the hood, you know, when Debo comes in the neighborhood, you got to tuck your chain in. You don't want to flaunt certain things and give give the, the robbers and schemers ammo to rob you. But it, when uh, I, uh, uh, ah, uh, I was cooking, I was cooking. I, 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 I want you to cook. I want you to cook. This is going to be a great debate. I want to pause you, though. Pause. I want to pause you. Stay. Keep that shit. What's sad from a white boy from Compton is this. You just came out and said a great thing. Like, Debo, we're hiding our shit. Who y'all hiding it from? Question. You can unpause. We hiding it from the, 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 the hood, the robbers. You, you, you hiding it from y'all. That's the saddest fucking part. Yeah. You're not hiding it from a white boy running up on you. You're hiding it from your, the same. From, y- from your own. Cat. The same homie and hood cats that we grew up with were hiding it from. Right. It's and this is why, and you see kind of where I'm going to go with this whole thing is when you made the comment, well, what happened? Why aren't you mad about the cats robbing them? Because unfortunately, they're the same motherfuckers who are wearing it. And mm. that's a fucked up part of this world we're living in. It's a fucked up stereotype, but it's the truth. Mm. It ain't, you motherfuckers ain't scared of no fucking white boy running up on you. You're know. the one scaring the white boy. Let's just keep it funky. That's what it is. Unless you're from the hood and you're from that shit and you're taking a picture at, at your homeboy's coffin with real motherfuckers. You who, ain't that dude. Who you did that? Oh shit, homie! I used to run up on the white boy. Who did that, JB? Hey, so I used to run up on those white boys we're discussing. But guess what? We all knew the real, and the real is we're stealing from ourselves. We're defending ourselves from ourselves. Thank you, Mo. Mo from the hood. Mo's a real one too. Now, I'm trying to figure it out. So why are we talking about this? Because at the end of the day, and Smitty's about to cook, and I get it, and I want the different, the, the, the different opinion. I just don't get that at the end of the day, we're de- why are we hiding from ourselves? Like, we're hiding it from ourselves. Uh, guess what, dog? It wasn't white boys who stole from them at the Rose Bowl. It wasn't. Just FYI. But it's the facts, homie, and we don't want the facts. We don't want the truth. And now I'll I'll get I'll get somebody will talk shit and I'm racist. Get the fuck out of here. Sh- go ahead, Sh- try it. <laughs> try to claim the racist shit with me. Good luck. I'm not worried about that shit at all ever. So number one, I'm gonna be real because I'm one of the few that can do it. And number two, I don't understand why we push the narrative. And I I, I why are we hiding it? And then why you must be from a different hood than me? Because when we grow up, Smitty. Just for what you just said, we didn't show it for that reason. Well, but the you know, ones that did show it was the ones who was also about it, so they wasn't worried about people coming up. There, to there you go. Exactly right. And, and nowadays, though, these motherfuckers ain't – are you playing football, homie, or are you ready to fend off cats that want to stash your shit? But the problem is it's people who who think who think – that 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 they're about it as well. But here, here's my biggest point before I forget everything you just said was I honestly it was true. It was right. It's unfortunate. In a black community, we live in this crab, was it crabs in a bucket mentality where, like, you know, when we're all poor together, we all got each other's back and we all relatable. But once one of us starts to make it out, jealousy, jealousy breeds envy, and, and, and you want to pull that person down, and you and you're jealous of, of what they have and what you don't have. So you want to rob and steal or talk behind their back or stab them in their back. That happens all the time in our community, and that's a fact, and that's true. Whether y'all love it or hate it or not, that's just what it is. So I'm not even going to argue with that. The angle that I was going in, which I had put out on Twitter, was that, yeah, you're right. Like, we are taught to, like, not necessarily showboat your stuff and do all this and that because, yeah, because of those people who are hating against you, you don't want people trying to come at you and steal and give them a, give them a reason to rob you. But now that I'm thinking from a more of a different – I'm not in the hood no more, so I'm thinking from a different – perspective I'm, I'm just thinking like damn like we over here mad at the people for wanting to wear nice stuff instead of being mad at the people for hating on them and robbing them like make it make sense like like yeah like i, I guess technically speaking yeah we don't give them a reason but that don't make sense 
that's like saying that's like saying don't don't give a killer a reason to shoot you. Don't give somebody like when are we going to blame the, the the person who's doing the crime versus the person who's not doing anything wrong? There's nothing wrong for me wearing a nice chain that I paid for. There's nothing wrong with me wearing a nice watch that I paid for. I, it's mine. I paid for it. So like, why am I going to get blamed in the event that I get robbed? You shouldn't have wore it. Well, you should you shouldn't have wore it and put it. You, you wore it, so that's what happened. When you wear nice stuff, you get robbed. It's like we we have accepted the fact that in the, the the hood mentality is taken over our minds to where we've accepted the fact that if you wear nice stuff and showcase it in any way, there's a high percentage that you will get robbed, and we're not going to feel sorry for you. We're going to it should be expected. That's a, shame. That's a shame, y'all. It ain't a, it ain't no white boys robbing y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. When are we going to address the big fucking elephant in the room? When are, why is JB always on here talking about why LeBron don't come be proactive with the platform that he has? Why Don Saley says what she said? Why don't we have Oprah and The Rock and the fuck? All these big black influential people come out and fight this shit. Because at the end of the day, all we do is rest in peace, kings and queens. No, homie, get proactive. Why is, why are we robbing each other? Why are we killing each other? We've been asking that question, Smitty, since I was a little kid. So, like, it's not, it's not, it's not fucking, it's not yeah. new. But that let's just new. keep it real. Like, where we're from, like, like Mo just said at Compton, he had the big thirty-seven diamond chain. He used to, mm -hmm. that was his number. He was our fullback. He wore number thirty-seven. He rocked that shit, and he from the hood, and he wherever he went, he was about that life. If you're gonna run up, you're gonna run up. We got a problem. The problem is. Nowadays, these cats want that problem, but then want to claim victim when they get their shit snatched. There's a different mentality now, and it's clear as fuck. Are you a football player, or are you trying to be from the hood to defend your shit? Let me ask you this real. Let me jump in real quick, JB. Why? Like, they're not in the hood. They in Colorado right That's now. My point. So, 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 but, but what I'm saying is, so, me wearing a nice, a nice chain or a watch... I'm not saying you're just wrong. Automatically makes me have to be and go go to gangster mode I, and be able I, to defend. Like I, why, why? I'm not saying you're wrong. I like nice shit too, JB. I, if the I, money I, come I, in, your chain's gonna be a little bigger, JB. I'm gonna be real with you, oh, and I'm gonna walk around with these wrong. motherfuckers too. I'm not I'm, saying you're wrong at all. I'm just saying you gotta know. If you start some, there's gonna be some. Like that's all I'm saying. You got some nice cars, JB. When you drive hey. around, when you drive around, <laughs> my, you know what's in them. <laughs> What? So I'm just saying, my my point what's, is what's in them? What's in them? You know what's in them. <laughs> then my point is, don't start none. Won't be none. Like this is my point though. Y'all went four and eight, Smitty. The target is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And see, see, it goes back to white men can't jump the great movie. Okay, break it down. Break it down. In that movie, Woody Harrelson said, "Y'all rather lose and look good." Mm. We rather win and look shitty. Mm. That is what the whole great famous quote was in that movie. It goes back to that ideology right now. We're we, rather, about, we, we rather win and look good, though. That's Colorado wants to look good and, and be shitty. Let's just keep it funky. And, 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 and that Colorado State white boy wasn't having it. He wanted to bang Hunter. Bang that motherfucker out of bounds. And everyone talking shit. And they lost hey. Don't start none, won't be none, homie. Don't start none, won't be none. Like, I don't get, why are we, okay, let me just ask this plain question, Smitty. Absolutely. If we do do that, which you mm -hmm. should have the fucking right to wear what you want to wear. Like, on, I have no issue. You should have the uh, guaranteed fucking T right to wear what you want. Yep. But if you do, then what is the problem when you do come after that? Cocky, arrogant, swagged out, whatever you want to call it, drip. What? Why are you playing victim when we come at you? Then, like that's all I want to ask you. Because it's my, it's my stuff. You stole my stuff. It's my stuff. Why? Why gotta be cocky and arrogant? Because I'm just wearing it. Yourself. If you can't defend yourself, then you don't play victim. You got your ass robbed, don't me? Is what it is. You wore it. I saw it. I took it. <laughs> so if I got some money and I buy some nice stuff. And I wear my nice stuff, and someone takes my nice stuff. It's my fault, and I can't play victim because I knew yes. once, I, once I purchased that that nice item that there was a high percentage chance that I would get robbed. 
If I wasn't prepared to defend myself with a gun or defend myself listen, with my hand, I'm not saying it's right. That, that makes, that's cra- that's Tell crazy. That's crazy. Smart. You, no, 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 you're right. You're right. But it's crazy. You just said you're it's talking crazy. your shit. Did you not? I say you're taught that. Yes, yes. In the you're hood. talking your shit. There's a you just like what are we talking about? In the hood, they at Colorado with Matt and them. But they're not academy when they go on the road. It comes with the territory, straight, simple, and plain. Like if you're gonna be about it, you're you're about it every day. Like, I, listen, do oh. I think you have the right to take someone's shit? Fuck no. But at the end of the day, Smitty, I walk around my head on a swivel, and I'm like, bring it then. I'm wearing my shit because that's my life. I'm about it. These cats ain't about it. When they came to LA, they got their shit snatched for a reason. You do understand a lot of these kids ain't from the hood, though, too. I know we always correlate being black from the hood. A lot of these kids ain't from the hood. They got two parent homes, too. Let me finish the point. What I'm saying, though, is they don't they don't know what they don't know. So if you're not from the hood, and and okay, so okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So I'm saying I'm doing the same thing. So I'm saying if they wear a nice chain, nice watch, they don't even they don't know they're doing nothing wrong. They just they just want some nice damn. They've been having Mo, nice stuff. They've been from the hood. Hold up, Mo. Hey Mo, how did our how did my players know the difference if they weren't hood? The coach, the uh, the mentor, the leader. But guess what? You got a fucking joke who is oh, allowing this shit to occur see, that you we, don't really give a fuck about because as Sean King, a black man, has said on this show, he's building a lateral program, not a vertical one. So he wants mercenaries to come defend his own two sons instead of building a program and recruit high school kids. And he wonders why, Smitty, he has problems in the classroom. <laughs> What are we talking about, homie? Like, you don't think there's going to be classroom problems when you don't even give a fuck they're checking diamonds on the fucking IG stories when you already got robbed? What are we talking about, homie? Who's the leader of the men, Smitty? The head coach, the Deion Sanders. Homie, keep it funky. You know what happened in the hood? Ask Big Big Mo in the hood right now what happened. We had Florida boys come to Compton, and you know who used to take them home at night? Mo and I, myself. We had to drop them off in their apartments because their Florida asses have no concept of different areas and how hoods operate, even though they were hood cats from Florida. Mm -hmm. Had the gold front, Smitty. They had a fucking huge herringbone. They had... I'm like, homie, you're going to get your shit snatched or you're going to get murdered over it. No, like, what the hell? Try me, homie. Try me. Really? <laughs> Mo, tell these motherfuckers we had to take the boat rights home every night to Santana Hood. We had to take them home and let the cats in the hood know they play football. They with us. So everybody in the neighborhood actually now looked out for those cats because they went to Compton. Plus, our head coach was the biggest dope dealer in the United States history who made one call and it was fixed. Anyway, so... We had that possibility and opportunity to see these things go down. And that is real hood life. That is when you really help and care for the kids on your team, Smitty. I'm not allowing this shit to be on IG, Smitty. Because if it does go on IG Live, I have no more defending it. Because now I'm part of it. I'm the head coach, homie. There is nothing that goes on in my program that I don't know about. So you don't t- you don't think he knows what's happening? And then he has the audacity to go out there and do, I guess, this. Let me know if they have a draft grade. There's Rowan. When he does, he is respectful. He's a good kid. I, I want to commend to that. And kind, but a lot of the times he has no idea of what is going on. He has missed way over three classes, so his final grade will drop. Any drop grades? No, sir. Okay. When he is asked to participate, sometimes I need to repeat what we're doing because he is not following, distracting. Any drop grade grades? No. Joins the class a lot of the time. I was not able to see his face after having a conversation with him, so that means you're going to talk to him about this, and he's not visible on the camera. Next one. Any drop grade? No. Next class. 
You're going to get something out of this. You're going to be a man or you're going to be a great football player. Since you choose not to be a great football player, we got to make you a man. And then he goes on to say, I felt so disrespected in my 10 years of teaching. Students do not follow even minimally, and it slows down my class so much. They make it clear that they don't want to be here, and they have very little personal responsibility, making me responsible for their grades. For the students that do want to learn, it has been a bad experience as well, since they have to work on breakout rooms, and the distracted students do not bring anything, anything, anything to the table. You just got to eat. You got nothing to the table. The knives, forks, and spoons. I often have to repeat the same three and four times because student athletes are present but not really in class. Mm. You present, but you ain't really there. You on the field, but you ain't doing nothing. Mm. You in a relationship, but you ain't got no love. You at the mall, but you ain't got no money. One ear out the other. One ear out the other. Um, so here, let me break some context. First of all, Daryl Hopkinson, who's not a member in the chat, uh, basically you're a nobody, but he said, man, all college, college spelt like collage. Mm. Uh, so we can't even fucking read or write, but he said all collage kids wearing chains, SMH. Why y'all on CU? Like the fuck, whatever that means. We're on CU because they're wearing the chains you're and probably a kid. single buddies fucking timeline. You fucking moron. We wouldn't be talking about them. We're not talking about BYU, you fucking idiot. There's a reason. Anyway, moving on amicably. Real quick. <laughs> let me move on, Smitty, to a... Amicably. This is why JB's blackballed, but yet has sent more kids to the NFL, more kids Division One than Deion Sanders has. Just That's fact. So the reason I'm blackballed is because I get up in front of my kids in the classroom and I sound like this. Four Fs. Art. You shitting me? Fucking shit. Art? Draw a fucking picture, man. Fucking go to class. I bet you pass it. Ignorance is life fucking threatening, man. Man, I know what the fuck's going on. I know you guys can't comprehend half that shit. Who gives a fuck? It is a game. If you go to class, stay off your fucking phone, sit in the front, turn in your homework, you'll get a C. But I'm the asshole. It's a game. He was keeping I'm it real. Asshole. Dion's being praised today. I'm the asshole. But guess what? I had the highest GPA, the highest graduation rate, and nobody went to jail or died in my watch ever. But I'm the asshole. But Dion has had his shit snatched, has had his fucking kids shit all over social media about doing the fucking wrong shit that he's preaching, and yet we're still talking about classroom behavior second year in? What? Make it make sense, homie! Miss me with this fucking godly shit that Dion's such a god in this world. Fucking miss me, homie. I'm so fucking tired of it now. And where's Matt at? Because this shit is fucking irking me now. Because I'm tired of it. I want real shit. I want real truth-telling people to lead our young men and to turn them into men. Not fucking women. Not fucking victims. Not fucking excuse makers. No. Own your shit if you're going to wear that shit. Like, that is what my message was. And guess what? Dog, you don't even have any depth. Sean King has already talked about it on the show. You have a lateral program. You have no high school depth. You have no O-line, D-line depth. You have no depth in your program. You've hired mercenaries to protect your two sons. Mm. And yet JB's the asshole because he's telling the truth. If you have mercenaries, you're going to have unruly fucks in class. Period. You have no culture, homie. You have zero culture. All we want to know, and Sean King, a black man who played in the NFL to all those fucking YouTubers out here, wants to know, why are you still talking about this? 
Why are you showing it on Instagram, homie? Why are you showing this shit? It's clearly edited and you have the opportunity to not show it. Why are you doing it? There's only one reason. Because you want the clout in likes and tweets too. Because you rock that shit too. Exactly. So if he rocked the shit, why would he tell his players that they, they can't rock the shit? This is why are we acting like we forgot who Prime is? This is who we always been from the jump. We want this man to change who he is because we're not comfortable with it. This is who he been. He was a guy who talked that talk, walked that walk, and he flaunted and he wore it, and he's from the hood. He did it all. He experienced it all. So why 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 are we expecting him to go to his players like you can't wear that chain? You shouldn't wear that chain. You shouldn't wear that necklace when he did it. That that you talk about contradictions earlier today. That's a walking contradiction right there. So hell yeah, I'm gonna tell my players to go out there, feel good, look good, play good, they pay good. That's what worked for me. That's what I'm gonna teach for you. Hey, That's then what don't it be is. mad. That's all I'm saying. Then go ahead and do what you want. Don't be mad though. Don't be mad when they get fucking mud stomped, their shit snatched, and all the targets are on their chest and they can't live up to it. Don't give them the victim mentality. So what you're saying is we don't gotta live. Them, we, we, if we they gotta don't leave, they're not defend them. We gotta live a soft, humble, scary life because if we showboat at all, if we wear too many chains, the big bad robbers might come get us. Let's be humble. Let's be quiet. Let's not talk shit. Let's let's tuck our chains in. Let's take our watches off. Let's take our rings off because the big bad gangsters in the hood might come and rob us. Man, hell no. I'm not backing out for no man, oh, whether I'm gangster or not. I'm oh, wearing my chains please, out. Please, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm wearing my chains out. I'm okay. wearing. I watch out. I'm wearing my wing. I'm showing it all because I earned it. Whether okay, it's, whether do it's it. through NIL, whether it's through my, my play on the field, do I it. earned it and I'm gonna wear it. Homie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live my life scared because of what this might rob me. What, what type of mindset is that? That's like I ain't gonna drive because I might get in a car accident. I don't get on the plane because I the plane might go down. Don't live no life of fear. Live life of luxury and live life of praise and faith. And that's how you live your life. I'm not teaching my kids to live life fucking scared because some motherfucking haters want to come and try to rob me. Are you crazy? Hey, 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 you, you don't live life that way. You gonna preach that to your kids? Man, hell no. I don't get it. You're being contradictive right now. Then don't fucking talk about it. Don't victim. Don't be the victim. Then when it happens, when you lose and when you fucking get your sit snatched, don't cry about it, homie. Like, I don't see how you're playing both sides of the fit. I'm on one side. You're on both sides. How like, on both sides? you want both things to be true. Like, cause you always say two things to be true. No, it can't be homie. If you're going to rock that life, then be about that life. Quit making excuses, homie. Quit talking about all this shit about excuses that he's gonna get when it don't go his way, and they don't they go four and eight. Like I'm trying to figure out in this whole business. I want people to be themselves. I want Smitty to be himself. I want him to have his own opinion. I want Prime and his staff to do what they do. I want their players to rock their chains. On the other side, if it happens to them, they have to own it and become who they are because it's not what they say i don't want to hear about all the victim roles that we're going to give them all the excuses they're going to get when they're shitty again here's the thing i want to say why can you compare dion when he did what he did to your point smitty that's why i say it's hypocritical you always are on this show saying it's the same, JB. There just wasn't phones in the day. We didn't have social media. Yes. So blah, 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 blah. Yes. Y'all chains were bigger. Yeah. But Dion did not have what he has given his kids. Dion actually came from the mud, worked through the mud, struggled through the mud, had to deal with all the naysayers and all the shit that he had to go through. And he actually earned all the shit he got. And he was a transcender because of we didn't have what we have now showing everything. Nowadays, though, the kids show it, rock it, do it, and all those things. Dion never actually played victim either, though. He stood on his business. He was the best player in the world. And he stood on his business and told certain programs, fuck you. I'm not going there. Fuck you. I'm doing me. And we praised it and we loved it. But now oh, when kids mean, do it, we hate it. Victim? Why is he the leader of a victim mentality? But who's playing victim, though? The kids and the team and the program and everybody defending them. What do you mean who's playing victim? When, when, when they got their chains stolen last year. They didn't year, play victim when they got their shit snatched? They were just telling them they got their shit snatched. 
Like from what I seen, they act like it's like if you just tell the truth, you're playing victim. Like no, we we went to the game, we came back, our shit was stolen. They they told what happened. It was my mother's one crying. They just said our shit got snatched. Now were people defending them in the media who who, who were victimized? Sure. That's that's Twitter. That's the universe we live in. People going to defend you. People going to hate you. That's what it, the kids themselves say. Hey, we got our shit stolen. That's fucked up. Like, what well, I mean, <laughs> like, well, that's a normal, yeah, natural human let reaction. Me, let me give you let me give you some insight. OK, give me some first insight. of all, give if I'm insight. the leader of men or boys and turning them into men. Yeah, I would be absolutely embarrassed or not be able to sleep at night because that's the only real thing that I'm there for. I don't give a fuck about wins and losses. Now, at the four year level and Dion's level, he has to win the game. Mm-hmm. He has to win football games. Plus, he has yeah. to get through to his kid. He has to still be the leader of men, just as Pete Carroll, Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, all these legendary coaches have done. Dabo, all these guys. We could say all the shit we want about them, and, yeah. and we could find some chink in their armor, too. Get it twisted. We can. But having said that, the bottom line is, if you look at the great players that have gone on to play at historical programs who have won mm-hmm. and then gone on to the NFL, we get we have one on our show every football season in Trent Richardson who will tell you everything there it needs to know about a Nick Saban ran program. Those kids move on, graduate and go on to NFL and have great careers on that. Usually you don't hear too much from them other than a few. Of course, every program has some sort of kid that does some sort of dumb act. And we have that in all programs, all walks of life every day. It happens. So when this happens though, like we see this over and over and over because of the enlightened or heightened light that's over this program. It's not on their program, Smitty, just because they just do what they do. It's because of the leader and the head coach being who he is. He's a flamboyant, swagged out, non-cussing shit talker. Let's be honest. And he is one of the greatest football players to ever walk planet Earth. That being said, you now own it. You have to own what you what your kids do. Like, there's no excuse no more. Like, it is what it is, dog. You put it on your chest. I'm wearing it. And just say that. I would not even talk about it anymore if that was the case. But all I see is just, why this? Why that? Because they're showing it, homie. Like, don't show it. I'm Who are you be- seeing it from, though? Who are you seeing the why stuff from? You're seeing it from just people on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So, you, so, so you're you like, uh, who are you seeing the why? Like, who? Like, the Colorado ain't doing nothing. They just wearing the stuff and they're moving on. But I'm just saying, you don't see that for no other programs. And that's why no other programs are being talked about. What I'm saying, come on, Smith, you're sitting here telling me Colorado's not the most. Go- watch program oh, in the sure. country because sure. of their social media for sure yeah well no, then what sure. are you talking about for sure i hear you i hear you man listen i don't know i think it all comes down to winning cures all you've you've been you've been the voice on here pretty much it made that you don't really believe in the direction of the program i don't think you believe that they're going to be successful next year i believe they're going to win seven plus games next year which is oh, well, Colorado. Look at it. And, at and, it. and i think it all makes sense let's look at it right now we forget that they won one game two years ago. So even though they went four and eight, which isn't a good record, that's still improvement for Colorado. <laughs> Smitty, hey, hey, Mo, they don't even want to talk about that. What happened on that day? They don't even want. They have no clue about that shit. They don't even want to know. I wrote it in my book. But anyway, I want to break down something because because Steve Kim and I brought up this topic. Like Steve was like, "Man, I think they're going to be good because they have an opportunity in this division or in this league." And then I I'm like, I don't I don't see that. And, and, and I'm with Sean King. So is Sean King hating on another black man? Is that what you guys are just going to say next? <laughs> You're going to call him sellout? Like, this is the crazy shit. If you go against the fucking norm, you're a sellout hater. That's what the <laughs> fucking problem is in this world. So Sean King, who's an NFL guy, played fucking long time, college legend, NFL fucking had two good great years, Pro Bowl worthy years. And he's going to be a sellout and wrong too, right? Because he went against the great Deion Sanders. Is that the fucking, that's the narrative now? That's what we're going to say, right? And you wonder why we're soft. The Big 12 next year, I just want to clear. I want to be clear on the conference they're in. Yeah. For everyone that thinks it's so easy, 
I, I'm curious on to why everyone thinks this is supposed to be easy. Let's, okay. let's look at their schedule too when you get done doing what you're doing. Well, I'm just looking at the, the league. The schedule though is, is, is what matters the most is who you're playing. I know, but who said the league is supposed to be so shitty? I, I don't know who said that. You got Baylor, BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, Iowa State, KU's on the rise, K-State is on the rise, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, TCU, Texas, Texas Tech, West Virginia. How the fuck is that easy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know who said that was easy. I don't know who said that. I'm trying to figure out how they're winning eight games. Like, all y'all say they're going to win eight games. What? ND State. Win. They got ND State. They got Nebraska. They got Colorado State. And they got Baylor. Okay, That's they got your... North Dakota State, which, by the way, is going to be an eye-opening experience for them. It's going to be a good so game. Quick. Yeah, but they're going to win, though. Really clear. And they're at home. Be really clear here first. And they're they're going to have fucking... Then they got UCF, Kansas State, Arizona, which is climbing. Cincinnati, Wait, they, North Texas Dakota, State. They got, North Dakota, then they got Nebraska. Yeah, I know. I'm reading oh. North Dakota State. They got and Nebraska, they got rivalry, Colorado State. Colorado, the Colorado State. Then, then they got Baylor. Baylor. Okay, so let's talk about the game, the teams that were down. Baylor last year was shitty in their really bad. Really There's bad. no way they can stay down or they're going to be fired. I mean, so they're going to be better. There is a way. I mean, I, I can't just there, give it There's to a them. way, but I'm just, I just said, if you are, you're going to get fired. Right. So gonna UCF, happen. no way he's not going to get fired. He's be gonna, real, be real, real quick, JB. Like, non by like, would you be shocked if Colorado started off? Look at their schedule. If they start off four and one. Would you be shot? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> See, you cool. don't think that you wouldn't be shocked if they go and beat Nebraska who will be better. North Dakota state. Who's just a tough out because of how they play the culture. They have, they have a culture. Of course, Colorado state. They sh better win Baylor UCF K state. Arizona will probably be down. Cincinnati, they better win. Why would you skip UCF? I I didn't. I said UCF. I I said I'd be shocked if they go four and one. That's your question. So, but for them to go four and one, that means they they win against North Dakota State. Okay, that's a good game, but like it's not like okay. a shocker to beat them. Like, it's not like okay. oh my god, he's, like, it's not a no. Goal, you man. better beat them. Right. Okay. So North okay. Dakota State, Nebraska, okay. Colorado State. I those are three winnable games. I think Baylor's a winnable game, but you think they're going to be really good next year, I guess. So, okay. uh, no, I'm not. I'm just saying, you said it. Would you be shocked if they're four and one? Their first five games are like winnable. Like North Dakota State, okay. Nebraska, they're Colorado State, winnable. Baylor, and UCF. They're like, all winnable, great. but you asked me if I'll be shocked. I said, yeah. All right, all right, my fault. I'm, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> so then you got to go to K State. I right. think it's a, that's that's an uphill a battle. battle. Yeah, Arizona, yeah. you should win, but, but we don't look, know. Kinda, they look tough. Cincinnati's kind of gone down since their coach left. Texas Tech is down. They will see. But Utah is right back in your league. Right. Utah is going to Utah's gonna be a top five team in the country this right. year. Right. Right. Yep. Kansas is a team on the rise. Like they're in a top 10 team in the country. Yep. Oklahoma State to end your season, who okay. kind of been down. That's. But okay, but stop right there. Even listen to how you're even listening to the teams that they're playing. Like, kind of been down. Needs a needs to have a good season, or they're getting fired. You better win that game. Like even the words you're you're using, I see seven wins. Even how you're how you're verbalizing it. Like, like, like why are we acting like it's it's so crazy that they could get seven wins and be bowl eligible? Like I I don't know. We'll see. Like you say, we'll see. You know why? Why? Because the, because the reason I'm bringing it up is simply for the fact that everyone has said this league and division is shitty. That's what oh, we've man. been hearing since the division, since the Pac-12 split up. We've been hearing that the Big 12 is going to be a way easier division and league, and this is prime for Colorado and blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at it, and I don't see that. Like, oh, that's man. the only reason I'm making this statement, and this is the only reason I'm bringing it up. I don't see. Do you really see a shitty league there? No, I don't see a shitty league. I don't. I think Colorado has a fa a, a, a favorable schedule, though. I do think. Ruski, shut the fuck up! Nobody cares about you, homie. Shut up! God damn! Well, Nobody you gives a fuck who you are with your fake name, you fucking idiot. Go away! God damn! This motherfucker's glittering the chat with fucking. Dick sucking abilities. Get the fuck out of here. 
fuck. <laughs> now, having said that, um, by the way, it's ironic that you say grown man in their fillings and you're sitting here in your fillings, you fucking idiot. God, Smitty, what is going on with you? I wouldn't go on another show as a grown man and just start talking shit to that person and calling him everything in the book on their show. I just think that's such a bitch made move. No, I didn't see him talk. So the only comments I saw was him talking about North Dakota State. I mean, he's, he's littering the fucking chat. With he, said, he said he lives down the street from North Dakota State and they're, hey, not, look, they're not, not who they used to be. He's literally making it. He's literally <laughs> fucking chatting. Every other chat is him. That's the only reason I saw him. I'm like, holy fuck, this guy. He wants attention bad. So he has a little dick. He swings from bigger dick men, and he literally has to come into this show because he's an absolute nobody. <laughs> he's a nobody, man. Homie, Drewski, I don't want positive. I want negative. I want to be the most negative motherfucker in here. So take your positive fucking ass out of here, you fucking bitch. All right, now, let's dive into... Uh, how good is that drink? <laughs> Shout out to Trident Coffee, man. Twin awesome, burner. Man. I know my daughter doesn't talk to me for a reason because your mother is taking her place. She is here with the gawk gawk. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> God damn. These motherfuckers got to stop coming at me, homie. I mean, they don't understand, Smitty, that when has somebody beat me on the virtual gangbanging? <laughs> like, I want to I wanna know. I want to know. When is so Drewski still talking? <laughs> I, I kind of respect it, though. Like, he ain't backing down. I respect it, though. God damn. And Drewski been watching our show for a long time, uh, so let, let, let's keep him in there. We J, got, we got JB ain't going got no emotions, y'all. That's the problem. You understand? Because of you. Because of you. Um, what, what happened because of me? I don't know. We haven't got to a lot of the shit, though. Because of you. You've been cussing people. You've been on fire. You've been cussing everybody out. TikTok, man. I'm so good. Like, yeah, you must. You must. I got a good. You, you know what? You've been drinking your your green juice. You've been eating healthy. You got energy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See what happens when you're not drinking as much liquor. No, as see, as here's the drunk. contrary to belief, Dave. Dave, you're the definition of a nobody. You have no picture on your profile. You're not a member, and etc. The people that actually are members of this chat and the community are somebodies because they've been here since day one and they're members, they're contributors, they're in the discord. They've been supporters. They're actual real fans. You're not, you're what we call a fan boy. So you are what we call bitch made cats. You are a fan boy who doesn't have the balls to show himself who has zero profile and you live with your mother sucking on her titties. Her nipples are the size of chocolate chip chips of hoy cookies. And you sit there and come into someone else's chat and then are mad when I call you out. <laughs> it's, it's fucking unbelievable mindset. Like, a mindset, fire right now. mindset is embarrassment. I, I just fire. embarrassed. And you could say whatever you want. I'm just embarrassed. Coach, don't let see. Then we got guys from Twitter that come over and they're saying the same shit, but you're here in the chat, homie. No, hold on, he's showing you love. He's showing you love. Hold Who on, slow down. Who he said, it? Coach, don't listen to him. Stay keeping it real. Stand on business. Love, love the show. Who said that? Dude from Twitter, the dude you was reading his comment, like you gotta slow down. So sometimes that's, they, that's another cat, but sometimes people showing you showing you love, oh, JB. No, I know, but there's another Twitter cat. Even see not it. him, not him. Chris Butts, JB, you're an unemployed JUCO coach, lecturing Coach Prime, the guy that uses all my sh literature. <laughs> I, I I just this is the thing. These cats don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. They don't. They don't understand. And it's it is what it is. It's actually embarrassing. I just move. I'm gonna move on. Um, something that I talked about on this show, Smitty, a while back, that you couldn't. You just can't believe it's real. JB, you're just hater. This is the new generation. And what I'm discussing is the. Draymond Greens of the world, the new media, they call them, uh, and the Micah Parsons of the world, who I said 
can't be serious when you rather do podcasts the day after your game instead of watch the fucking film. Mm. Well, news has come out about Micah Parsons, who I've been pretty much dead on balls accurate about. Go ahead, Smitty. Go ahead and read it. Whatever you want to do. There are some people within the Cowboys organization who feel that Micah Parsons' behavior has worn thin per 105.3 SS. I've heard from way too many people that if Micah Parsons was out of there, there would be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. Most members of Dallas Cowboys organization are not happy with star Micah Parsons. Micah has worn thin there. I need more detail. I need more information. I need, I need names and numbers. I need to know when you say when you say many members, is that two players? Is that three? Uh, I need to, when you say behavior, is he is he talking crap? Is he getting in trouble with the law? Is he is he expecting excellence from his teammate because he's the best player on the team? What exactly is he doing? Because sometimes when you're a great and you expect greatness from others, it's very uncomfortable from people who don't want to work hard, who don't do, who don't love the game. So I just I just need more information. God bless Smitty Soul. People didn't always love me, JB, because I was somebody who busted my ass. I was going to expect you, greatness, expect excellence, JB. That's God who I was. God bless you. Fucking shit. God I'm a different dude. Like JB. So hold on. That's like people. Every that runs through your fucking veins is 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 is, is, un, is un it's unparalleled. People come to me and say, "Dang, how you do a show with JB?" So I'm supposed to listen. To, oh, okay. Hey JB, most members came to me and say I shouldn't do a show with you because you because you crazy. That's my point. I'm about believe I'm about believe everything I hear, JB. No, unpar- I'm okay. giving you compliment. Unparalleled positivity just runs through your. I wish I could do it. I will. I wish I could do it. I wish I could have the positivity, and I know you take a lot of heat from me. I don't give a fuck what they say about you. I don't really give a fuck. I love our haters. They're our biggest fans. They always have been. So I, my advice to you is just keep your fucking head down. Keep grinding. I actually look at comments because I it, it fuels me. I don't really give a fuck. They're nobodies. Um, yeah, I don't care either. I just on some like man to man stuff. It's it just interesting. It's like, damn, I know y'all want to say this to my face though. That's the biggest thing. It's all that's what I'm saying, but that's, that's the thing. Point your, that's my point to your take for all these months about the social media shit. That's it's why crazy. I think it has definitely ruined society. Like, there's like no a long more. time ago, JB, I, on this show, I, I think I told you, I said, I wish, I wish humans had nine lives because there are moments where people just need to be like taken away just to prove a point. For real, just to prove a point though, like not forever, but just to be like, hey, bro, just know that this ain't this Can't thing ain't guaranteed. That, but that's that's why I tell you all the time there's no such thing as the, there's the truth. That's it. That's you can't have that. You can't have it both ways. That's why I think a lot of shows out there have gone so gray area mm. and it disappoints me because you can't have it both ways. You can't just be gray area. There's no there's not there's only one truth. Like I, I, we've already discussed it and beat a dead horse on this topic, but that's why I, you know, your positivity is unbelievable. But I, 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 why are you saying that? I just like the truth is, Smitty, when there's smoke, there's fire, and there's it doesn't matter if it's two, three. You said you want numbers, you want this. The truth is, it's coming out. They're tired. Somebody's tired of Micah Parsons in Dallas somebody and that's enough see the teams that win back in the day the shit comes out 20 years later right <laughs> right don't come out in the during the run like the cowboys for a reason have been a bad organization for a reason and i don't understand why people don't grasp that concept the clippers are the clippers for a reason why do we continue to have faith Every single year in these programs, in the in these in these in, in these organizations, when there's smoke, there's fire, Smitty. Micah Parsons is clearly what I said he was. Stefan Diggs is clearly what I said he was. There's a they released a thirty million dollar dude for no reason. Why? There's no such thing as releasing a dude like that for no reason with no return. And the and the Texans just said, you know what? We're gonna double down. Now we're going to give you a one-year contract and you can be a free agent after this, meaning you better show your ass or you're going to be an irrelevant motherfucker in this NFL league. Mm. And I'm glad the Texans did that. Now, in theory, the Bills really won this fucking trade if this kid ends up being a shitbird in Texans. 
because now the Texans still gave up what we clown about a Chico stick and cream ching cheese. We say that all the time on the show, but the bills got something. If this cat ends up being what a shit bird and a bust in, Word. in Houston, or if he, if he cancers up the young kids that we love so much on the show, it, any of those things happen. That is a bad look. And it's a Buffalo bills win at the end of the day. Right. So it, it, I, I'm just saying, and there's smoke this fire. And then, and then this comes out in Dallas right after the Micah Parsons thing. Now you have a city lamb issue. City oh, lamb it's now. It's a holdout could become for Cowboy star or wide receiver CD lamb who isn't expected to attend the team's OTAs. This is regular stuff though, JB. Stop, man. People hold out when the money ain't right. It's the only leverage. Give me, give me a positive. I need it's that the positive. only leverage that players have. And when a kind of situation, Emmett Smith during your era, Hall of Famer, the most shout out to five hour energy man. Uh, we need that sponsor immediately. The, the 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 rushing leader in the NFL history, Emmitt Smith, set out for three four games. The Cowboys were shitty, and they say, you know, we got to pay that man. Brought him back, and they won a Super Bowl. This has been going on for decades. JB, the only leverage players have when it comes to getting paid is sitting out. JB, if there was another option, JB, they would do that. JB, JB. <laughs> That's the only leverage they got. See, JB wants you to just come there, play for whatever they they pay you for. Forget the money. If you if you hurt your leg, forget it. Just go out there and pay for hundred thousand dollars, whatever the money is. Like you, you, you're you're a company guy, JB. J er, J Earn, how am I reaching, dog? Listen, how am I reaching when the the topic of the discussion is the organization being the organization? Micah Parsons, it's always something, Jay Earn. It's always something about the Cowboys is my point. It's not that one person sitting out and leveraging and all that. Yeah, we get it. But why is it always the Cowboys that's in the news? <laughs> why is it always the Cowboys? The Texans are better than the Cowboys right now. And the fucking Texans are the best team in the state of Texas. That shit is crazy. And then y'all defend the shit. You'll defend it and find the positive. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, can't wait to get in the studio. We have an update real quick. Smitty and I, I've done most of the work. Smitty did a couple lazy things on Friday uh, when I was at the funeral. Um, he found out a few – he had a few leads. Uh, everything he did basically was for not because he didn't do the right stuff. But we got a lot of leads in. Um, so we're getting there. We're trying to get it done. So if anyone wants to go on over to Winnable and help us get the fucking studio, we would definitely be appreciative because we might fly you out and fucking be guests live in the studio. But, but no, nah, you won't. You won't even hit the fucking like button. How can we expect you to fucking help us if you can't even hit the like button? Fuck. Anyway. Um, I'm going to refresh Winnable right now and look and see. Let me see. I want to nope. dive in. Nope. <laughs> I want to dive into uh, Caleb Williams because I want to dive into Bailey. Can you find the Merrill Hodge take on Drake May? And then we're going to dive into this. Let's dive into some Caleb Williams. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Bailey. I want to dive into Caleb Williams. This is him at Top Golf. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna role play. Okay. I'm gonna be Smitty this time. I want you to be me. What? Uh, what, what you think I would? Am I? I'm gonna do about him, and I want to role play, and I'm gonna clip it on a vertical, and I'm gonna change the narrative of the show, and I'm gonna be the good guy, and Smitty's gonna be the bad guy. Nah, see, because not nah, because Belly gonna cut it, and, and Belly not gonna lead with. No, uh, nah, Dick nah, Smitty nah, is uh, uh, role playing nah, JV. He gonna nah, just cut nah, it. <laughs> We don't want to clip. We don't want to clip this, but you gave me an idea. But I'm not going to clip it. But I want you to. I want you to do a JB role play on what I would say, and I'm going to be you. I'm going to go first. I'm Smitty. Man, let's just let these guys be. This is who they are, JB. There's we've always you wouldn't want nobody telling you, JB, to change you. So why are you wanting him to change him? Oh, he's gonna go lead a bunch of men next year. Listen, pink purse, pink phone, it don't matter. Paint your nails. 
This is him, JB. Let's just let him breathe, JB. Let him live. This is who he is. JB, go. See, this is the problem with your fucking generation. We allow any and everything. Fucking top golf. Fuck you playing top golf. Throw a football. Why is he not on the field right now throwing a damn dig route? Throw a dig route on time. That's what I want to see. You want to hit a golf ball? Throw a dig route on fucking time. He's doing dance moving, tick tocking. That's the problem with the generation. He's supposed to lead a franchise. How the fuck is he going to lead a franchise and he can't even lead his own damn self? Painted nails, phones. What's next? Brazing his fucking hair. What's next? This guy doesn't. That's the problem with your generation. JB, JB, two things can be true. You can have a pink phone and fall out. You can do both, JB. See, that's the fucking problem with you, Smitty. Look, it's not you. It's not you, Smitty. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all the fucking slap dicks in the chat right now. Fucking Janet C with no fucking picture and I ever saw her talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Fuck you, Genesee. My resume is bigger than your resume and Caleb, Caleb Williams' resume fucking put together. Caleb is a slap dick. He won't amount to shit. He's a talent. He doesn't know how to read defenses. He's going to run the ball. He's a mixture of Tyler fucking Murray. And I don't fucking know. He's going to be horrible. He's like, hey, we can't leave the bad franchise. He's going to get Justin Fields. JB, two things can be true. I tell you all the time on this show, JB, that two things can be true. You can actually paint your nails and still throw a spiral, JB. I've seen it with Andrew Luck. I've seen it with AR5. I've seen it with Lamar Jackson. You can do both things. (laughs) See, 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 Big Smitty. See, see, back in my day, the quarterback was the most gangster toughest motherfucker on the football field. That, that, that's what it was. I would have stiff warmed the fuck out of you, Big Smitty. The problem with today's era quarterbacks and Keller Williams, they're not stiff warming the damn thing. They're accepting it. They're accepting it. And that's the problem. They're ex- they want to get tackled. That's the problem with your soft generation. Keller Williams, he's not tough. None of the quarterbacks now is tough. And you guys are fucking soft. And it's, it's not the player's fault. It's the parents' fault and the coach's fault for allowing it. They're allowing it, Big Smitty, and that's the problem. So listen, it's okay. They moved on from Justin Fields. Keller was gonna gonna join the French shot. Then we're gonna see. We're gonna see if this man can, if he can lead men. Because I know back in my days, Keller Williams got his ass beat the fuck up in the locker room for playing top golf and for dancing and TikToking. For Big Smitty, day one, Big Smitty, we would have stumped his ass out in the locker room to set the tone. It's like going to jail. You come in the cell, we're beating your ass, we're knocking your ass out. Pause, as your generation likes to say. We don't say pause because when I grew up, we didn't have to say pause because we, we knew what it was. We would have beat his ass up day one and set the tone. But your generation, <laughs> you guys don't care. I don't care. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> Go ahead, Big Smitty. Go ahead. Facts. Facts. Clap <laughs> uh, it up for Big Smitty, JD. Um, I'm to get a victory. We got some breaking news. Somebody called one of our our, our weekly guests, uh, St. Louis pitcher, Cardinals, Jordan Air. Keenan Middleton called me and gave me something to show for Big Smitty, and we got to show it. Since you're talking about Smitty. He did, he did. Smitty, bro. Red hot. I told you, JB. I told you the red hot rebel. Shout out to my brother, Kevon Maybon, one of the best athletes and receivers out of the St. Louis area. He was my roommate at Ball State, all time reception leader until his record got broken the other day. Kevon made by my homie from St. Louis put me on. Shout out to his mama. We used to get red hot riblets and barbecue ribs. Eat some barbecue ribs and barbecue baked beans with the red hot ribs on the side. <sighs> Stop playing with me. Shout out to Keenan Middleton for trusting your boy. I love it. Baby, you about to leave? I love you, The only way I could describe is spicy barbecue. You said what? 
He said the only way I can describe it is spicy barbecue because I he said those yeah. things are gas. I said hell no. Nah. Smitty, the chat is speaking. What they saying? The chat is speaking, saying that they like the Smitty like JB more than the regular Smitty. That is what they're saying. They like the acting Smitty that wants to act and sound like JB. You played me well. You played me well. Um, and and I, I couldn't. I couldn't even go all the way in because I'm still in my apartment. If if yeah. I was like free, I could have really did. I kind of tried to play it off a little no. smooth. So I played I you better, out. but yeah, you played well. Um. You easy, you easy to play. I can do I know, you. I'm too easy to play. That's the problem. You easy, but I'm good at though. Everybody ain't not good at that. Like I'm a real actor though. If y'all ain't check my my workout, go to uh, YouTube right now. Uh, type in no walk ins. You'll see my uh, one of my probably my I'll call it my acting debut. I did something else before that, but it was a real minute role. This is my real acting debut. I do this shit at, at a high level. So everything I do is at a high level. Tomorrow's show is going to be a lot of NBA talk. Uh, even though we have Steve Kim on, um, because. The Lakers and uh, Warriors are coming down to the wire, and then we're going to do some – as we get closer to the NFL draft, which I believe is in about 17 days, 18 days, mm. um, we're going to start mock drafting this thing. And a good friend and someone that I'm going to do a show with, with Sean Salisbury, um, Merrill Hodge, who has been pretty spot on with QBs, similar to me, has come on and said that Drake May – is the kind of player that will get you fired. He came out and said the same thing Sean King has said. But what do we know? Huh? But what do we know? Hey, God permitting, we'll be back tomorrow. Um, God permitting that the, 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 the eclipse doesn't just disintegrate the world and the planet Earth. But if it is our last day, so be it. Y'all mm -hmm. went out like Willie Lump Lump. I went out like... <laughs> OG, triple OG, <laughs> JB. <laughs> so we'll see you tomorrow if God permits. If not, Smitty, been it's real. Been real. I'm been going real. to heaven. I don't know about y'all. Been real. Uh, Drewski's still saying great show. So maybe Drewski has tough skin. That's what we need. And Mo, I'm going to work on getting my hair cut right. Shout out to Mo. Preston. I don't know who that is, you but he should become a member. Cat, you did not miss Matt. Matt didn't make it on the show today. I think he got into a car accident. He's okay though. Um, so we'll see. Uh, what's up, Cindy? You good? Um, well, we we'll see you guys tomorrow. Pound that like, subscribe, and go over to Winnable. Whoever is our first paying member on Winnable will get a free hoodie, a free hat, and a free tumbler, tumbler mug. I'm gonna solid too. Max, we're going to hit you up about that. Max want to invest in the studio, JB. He said hit him up in the Discord. He said he got about 20 racks for us for the, for the uh, studio. So hit him up on Discord. Hell yes. Max got big cheese. He Max a real one. Max live in Coeur d'Alene, the only brother in Coeur d'Alene. Big bread. Max big got big bread. bread. Big cheese. Hey, shout out. We'll see you tomorrow. Much love. Pound that like. Peace. Issues get pressed so fast you don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown. Kill the ass a rap.